And we are live. With none other than our special guest, Queen Amy. How are you doing, Josh? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Uh, uh, are you <clears throat> what, one of the what was that? Sorry. You're I'm breaking a, up. How are you feeling today after what must be one of the biggest games of your career? No, oh, it's it's crazy, you know. It just shows the standard that Premier League players require, and the little things they do off the ball as well as on it. And it's you know you learn so much from playing against them. It's it's unbelievable. But I, I thought you boys, you boys done yourself proud in that game. First twenty minutes and hit the crossbar. I mean, I was just in the seat myself. Yeah, we hit the crossbar uh, when it was a nil nil. So, you know. We always thought we had a chance and was in the game. It, it was a shame it didn't go in, really. It would have would have really lifted everyone that bit more. But, you know, to hit the crossbar at 0-0 and potentially go ahead against, you know, not too not too long ago, Champions Champions League finalists, it's, it's a great thing to say. But, you know, the scoreline shows the difference in class and everyone everyone knows that they're, they're unbelievable players and to play against them was, was unbelievable. And... You know, we've done ourselves proud. We've had an amazing cup run, and, and uh, everyone should be proud of that. Yeah, definitely, definitely, mate. Uh, what, what do you feel was the differences? What, what do you think you could learn from today as well? Do you think you take anything from today? Yeah, um, definitely. It's just how clinical they are. They they took their chances. You know, you don't look at their goals and think, "Wow, they they was unbelievable." They was great goals, but not not really where they cut us open. It was it was from our mistakes or from errors that we should have done better with. Um, and because of that, the, the top players and top players punish you, and that's what they did today. You know, if, if that crossfire effort goes in off Neil Kenji, then we go 1 0 up, and we had a few other chances after that as well to potentially score. So that's the difference in, in levels, and, and it shows that out on the pitch today the way they took the chances. Yeah, mate, definitely. And do you think this will uh, kick start your season, maybe push you up in, in the league a bit more as well, help you out there? Yeah, definitely. Hopefully, we've been doing well uh, anyway in the league, but. Yeah. With all this stuff that's going on outside of football and everything, we're not too sure where our league stands at this moment in time. So hopefully it carries on after after today and uh, we can we can really kick on and, and get promotion. Yeah, like you said, it's been it's been absolutely hectic for you guys. Uh, all the sort of fanfare around this. It must have been a completely different world compared to the sort of usual everyday uh, stuff you used to have to deal with. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, you know. Getting the uh, the coach down today to the ground, there's thousands of fans waiting outside. And the, the support was absolutely unbelievable. You know, we get great support anyway, but the, fa the fact that the fans aren't allowed in and they're all queuing up on the streets and getting a police escort down to the ground, it, you know, it's surreal. <laughs> and, uh, and it's something that will live with us for the rest of our lives, definitely. Yeah, mate, that's, that's, that is that's, it's what, it's what you dream as a, as a kid when you want to when you're thinking about playing football these, these days like this, man. It's just a shame it wasn't at White Hart Lane, but it, I mean, it had its own charm there itself in your ground. Yeah, definitely. You know, in, like I said before, in normal circumstances, everybody wanted away at, at White Hart Lane to play in front of all those fans and 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 to play in front of as many as possible. It's a shame it's behind closed doors with everything that's going on at the minute, but yeah. hopefully things can get back to normal soon and, and we can go on another cup run in the future to to potentially play at another big boys ground like that. Yeah, I don't think this will be the last time we're hearing from you. Um but before you go, whose shirt did you get? Um, <laughs> I got re I got regulons. Yes. Nice. nice. Yeah, so Very there was a lot trade. of there was a lot of arguments and everything going on in the <laughs> room, but, um, <laughs> We got bales. It were, oh, I'm not too sure actually, but there was a few fights for everyone's shirts, but not being able to, not being able to swap on the pitch because of COVID rules and stuff was was a shame really. Because I spoke to Musa after the game and he said he'd give it me, but as soon as he got into the bag, it was you know basically a free for all. So at least I got a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't want to be left with like a, a training kit or a sock. No, no, no. That's it. It, it wasn't actually the shirts either. I swear, it was um, they brought spur ones to give to us. So I think they've been strict on the COVID rules and everything. But at least we got a shirt with the name on. And it's a shame about not getting a signature or anything. But you know, you, you'll take what you can get, especially at this level. Yeah. 
I mean, look, I, I'm sure you'll be able to get in contact with someone and get something signed for you boys because, it, I mean, this is something that, that doesn't really happen for, for guys playing, playing at the level you're playing at. So it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So they, they, I'm sure they'll see that and uh, try and get something to you. Yeah, hopefully. Well, I'll just have to tweet uh, regular Mona and ask him to, to send me something. Hundred percent, definitely play on that. That way, we'll give that little retweet as well. Uh, Josh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you very much for coming on tonight. Uh, say well done to your boys um, from us uh, from the Transfer Exchange Show. Um, you done, you done yourselves proud. It was a brilliant game to watch as well. Yeah, thank you. No problem. It's a shame. Obviously, I can't stay on for longer. With um, it's just been absolutely crazy. You know, the lads are in there now. Um, celebrating the run that we've been on and, and what we've been through and everything. So um, I'll definitely come back in the future next week or whenever you, you want me on and, yeah. and I'll have a better chat when, when I'm, I've got more time. Yeah. Both Man well, United supporter, well Nathan. Man United fan. Yeah, yeah, big yeah, fan as well. That's all I want to hear. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so just well done. Like I can see obviously Marina doing really well in the league and it's the same league as I had my, my nephew at. Um, Brig out as well last season, so so I know I know exactly which league you're in. So yeah, good luck for this season. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, no yeah, we are in the same league as Brig out as well. So I'll uh, yeah. say hello to him for you if you're still there. Yeah, he's not there anymore, but yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, Josh. Yeah, um, you go and enjoy yourself, mate. Uh, because I'm sure you. I mean, I'll, I'll be celebrating now, win, loss, or draw against that. Uh, but yeah, you, you take care, mate. I will do. Thank you very much. I'll uh, definitely be back on in the future if you, yeah, if you want speak me. To you All right, we'll speak to you soon, mate. Cheers, Josh. Bye, mate. All right, thank you very much for Josh coming on. Ah, oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant start to the show. Um, yeah, FA Cup special. We've got more coming on. We've got we've got uh, Richie Bennett coming on. We've got Jamie Stott from Stockport County. Uh, also, Roshan Thomas of uh, West Ham, correspondent of The Athletic, will be coming on to discuss... A bit of transfer rumours to, to squash, because we've heard a lot of transfer rumours going around recently. One involving the Inketia, one involving a few other players. Um, Roshan's going to come on and talk about them. He's also going to talk about his game uh, against Stockport County on Monday. But first of all, first of all, we've got... We've not even said hello to everyone. How rude is <laughs> How rude. All right. But this is live TV. We've got it's got someone in the FA Cup who's just on TV. So I mean, right now it's a little bit more important. Oh, let's go say hello to the people in the, in the comment section as well. <laughs> Oliver, how you doing, Oliver? Ekram, I see you, Ekram. How you doing? Uh, is this Mayor and Melvin Marks, obviously? But how you doing, everyone in, in, in on on the panel? How is everyone tonight? Brilliant, fantastic. No great spot on. This week. We're good. Straight great start to the show. All good. All right. uh, Jerome, how are you doing? Yeah, all good. All good. Thank you. Are we picking some teams today or not? Picking no, players no, today? No, no, no players being picked today. <laughs> nah, right. No players being picked today. I thought last week was a good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, mostly my team again, probably. Huh? They're resting the right back in the Arsenal. No? No. No, no, not this week. Not this week. <laughs> hey, I think you might today. need your headset, lad. You're a bit low. A bit lower, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, I, I could turn him up. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. We could do this now. We can edit the mic settings. Boom. Nice. What if I put these in? There we go. Oh, so we're done. Good. You're there loud. we go. I just done it. No, Steve, stop. 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 Oh, yeah. no, stop. <laughs> I done it. I done it. I done it. It's all good. Live TV, people. So we do it. How you doing, Nathan? I'm all good, as always, especially good, after good. yesterday. Obviously, not a great performance, but yeah, I'm good. All right, all right. And how are you doing, Simon? You good? Yeah, I'm good. See, that's good. Why that's come good. the crossbar be higher? <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> I know, I know. I wish that went in. That would have been, that would have been brilliant. But Even like if it finished said, 5-1, I couldn't care. But like <laughs> we said, like we said, that's, that's the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, that game. I mean, it may come around again, it may not, but you just got to take the occasion as it is. All right, yeah. let's get into it. Um, Nathan, let's start off with Man United. Um, what for yesterday? How'd they get on? 1 0 win, early goal. May I thought there might have been a little bit more, but ended that way. How'd it go? We did, we did also have a game against our rivals as well on Wednesday. Are we going backwards from yesterday? <laughs> oh, first oh, no, no. Do you know what? Let's start <laughs> from Wednesday. Let's start from Wednesday. 
We were trying uh, to be nice. We was going to forget no, about that. No, no, I wasn't trying to be nice. I just completely forgot that. about it. Do you know what it was? It was the smile on his face that threw me off. You'd usually expect <laughs> there to be like a in between. Oh, we lost the other day to our arch rivals in the in the Capital One Cup or the Carling Cup or the Coca Cola Cup semi final. That shows my age. Two nil. Hmm. How did that one go, Nathan? I think City. Um... Probably from when I watched City earlier on the season, I thought they weren't the same team. Like they were not going to be the same team anymore moving on. But yet on on that day, they showed me that they are that they are still up there. Mm. Um, that wasn't even their first team, and they totally obviously they were totally outclassing us. Um, they were the superior team, um, and you can see that we didn't really have too much to trouble them, um, and they really just took us apart in the end. That De Bruyne shot goes in, and um, that's a great shot. If that goes in, obviously, that you can see they were the better team, and they took care of us. And that's really what happened. And I'm, I've got no complaints. We played as well as we could from what I could see. I know we could have been a bit sharper in attack. You know, on another day, you probably have you know balls getting connected um, to the strikers. You know, Bruno not really connecting with Rashford and stuff. But all in all, I can't be. I can't complain. You know, we lost the game. And they were the better team. You know, I'll hold my hands up and say City are the better team still. And they deserve to win that game. Now, it doesn't mean much, though, because we're still above them in the league. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They are coming, though. They are coming. Yeah, they what, are what's the surprise, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they overtake us playing the way they've been playing. Just have what's to watch out for them. Yeah, but... All but, of us. But this is what it is. Uh, you, 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 we're going to Watford, then we'll talk about in the league. But we, the, you, you lost against City... But you, you had a chance to, to make up for that yesterday against Watford and you did that. Yeah. So yesterday it was one of them ones where you look at the team sheet and you think, OK, let's see what these boys can do now. And let's see if James can take it by the scruff of the neck and make things happen. I mm. feel like he, he failed to do that again. Uh, he had mm. a lot of chances to really hurt them as well. And it, could, it was a great opportunity for him to really take advantage of his pace. And he just didn't really have that end product. So I wasn't too happy with that. But one thing that I did like... It is a bit is a is a prize. Lingard, he actually was quite bright. Um, the other, only problem was that he didn't have all the other players playing, which would have probably made him a good little. You know, he would have, he may have done a bit more. Yeah. So when he's around a lot of good mm. players, I actually like his link up plays, passing and movement. It's all it's always been good until he had that kind of bad spell. You know, last season. So mm. I I was kind of um, happy with that. Um, other than that, I, I saw the Bayi and Tuan Zabi partnership at the back, which I always thought, I wonder if that would actually work, you know? Yeah. And then um, they did pretty well up until Bayi got smashed in the back um, and then he had to come off. Um, obviously expected, I guess, uh, but I, I hope he's in, uh, not injured for the future. Tellez did really well at left back, I think. And I think Van der Beek put stake to claim for what he's all about. That link up play and that extra little bit of understanding of how to break down people when they're really close. The way he let, he brought Matter into that game, that flick round the corner, just put Matter straight in. That's what we need. We need that extra little bit at times. And it's not just Bruno who can do that. You need to have that extra little guy. And he's he is that link that can do that. Other than that, I don't really think there was much to talk about. I fell asleep towards the end of the game and I never fall asleep in my United game. So <laughs> They yeah, were just happy we got through. Didn't even watch interviews. Didn't watch anything. And I normally watch all of that. You know, I didn't even care anymore. I was like, forget that game. Let's go on to the, you know, let's get to Burnley and see if we can get ahead of Liverpool. So even if we lose, we can still hopefully stay on at least same points. You know what I mean? And, and that's the thing. You, the, the Burnley game, the big Burnley game, which could take you top of the league. Yeah. Yeah. So that Important is something amazing. And that's what I mean. It's like, it doesn't matter if a team's better than you. Like, City could be better than us. But if they're not consistent all through the season, then we could stay consistent. You never know. And we could just get ahead, just like we are doing right now. We're, how can we be top? We're not actually the best team in the league, but we could go top. So, end of the day, I'd be happy with that. And I'd just, I'd just be happy with wherever we fall. If we fall for, between first and third, I think we have had a good season. And and the things I'm hearing around, um, just from listening to, to, to podcasts and, and people that are close to the team, is that the team have got this motivation right now where they feel like they could win the league. And that's 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 uh, that's an integral thing to have. 
um, yeah. to, to push them on. Because as I said to you the, um, a, a couple of weeks ago, I feel like Man United lost that mentality from we're the winners and you've got to take us on to, uh, to worrying about what other people have got. Um, and maybe this is the thing that can take them over, take them over to the edge. Well, look, when you win games and you win games in a row, you get consistently winning games, you get into that mode of we're going to win. So as simple as that, that's what happens. And we know we've now found a system where we can kind of shore up and help Maguire to not get like done for the, the, the weaknesses that he has. And then he can focus on the strengths. And then we obviously let the others go forward and attack. And against most teams, we will get chances galore. It's just against the big boys, I think we'll need that extra player in attack where that's when things will open up. But then we have to have that extra player at the back to make sure things don't open up back there when we do do that. But the great thing is now we're going to have Diallo in. He is the black mess yeah. for me. You know, he's, oh, he's the seriously. way he plays. I just look at him and I say, why is he doing everything like Messi? Um, obviously, he's not Messi. But when yep. we see how he controls it, when yeah. he dribbles, dribbles, lures people in and passes and dribbles and gets yeah. it back and does the same kind of moves... He's like the black Messi for me. It, and it, I just can't it, wait to see him. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that they've gone off of Sancho now. They've they've moved away from Sancho. They want to concentrate on him. This is why I worried before the fact that they were talking about getting Diallo in and Sancho. Diallo's a few years younger, but still that for me that that that's that's a block in the uh, in his pathway, in his development. Mm. Without taking bringing in Sancho and you concentrate on this kid. Honestly, serious, serious talent. I'm excited yeah, to see this from the Premier League. He's he's he's, he's like the Sancho, isn't he? He's like what Sancho, what Dortmund did for Sancho did for Dortmund. Exactly. What he could do for us now. Yeah. So yeah. he could go from being 40 million, which we're paying for, whatever, and then being a hundred and something million in a season or two. You know? Exactly. So exactly. just give him them chances. Let him come on for 20 minutes, 30 minutes every game, and then all of a sudden, if he starts blitzing it. Let him start games. Just like when Greenwood, what he did. I think if we can get that out of him this season, I think with the way we're playing now in attack, he can bring that extra little bit of spark. I'm telling you, with the, the link-up with, with that he can do with the other boys, it's going to be frightening. It's just to think about. It's exciting to think, you know what? I've got to be watching that when he comes on. You know? Yeah. yeah. And we are now joined by Stockport County pair, Richie Bennett and Jamie Stock. How you doing, Richie? Hi. Good thanks, How are you doing, Jamie? <laughs> Hello, boys. All right. Hi. Uh, uh, you get. Are you looking forward to tomorrow's game, uh, Richie? We we'll go with Richie first. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I think some of that, that we've known for a while. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think we we've been building up to it, and all our league games have um, been been that excitement and that buzz around. Um. So yeah, can you hear me there? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, you can hear. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's been a, been been that buzz around. Um, I've all been like been looking forward to it in training and that, that spring in your step. You know, it's it's that looking forward to to try and getting that starting eleven to be around it to be around the team and putting that shift in like week in week out to make sure like you're in that in the starting eleven. Like I said, um, for the Saturday's game, uh, for the Monday's yeah. game. Sorry. So, 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 what's the preparation? Has there been extra preparation? Uh, we've, we've, we've taken on West Ham. Have you, have you had to step it up a bit more? Do you feel? Um, I think we, we've prepared the same as what we do with every game. Really, um, obviously, we've been in our weekend, which we don't normally do that. You know, only in on the Thursday and Friday, but we've been in Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, um, I think we're more than prepared um, to take take them on. Yeah, uh, Jamie, is this 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 the big game for you? Do you do you feel uh, pumped up for it? You ready for it? You you hoping to score that that winning goal? Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, it's a big game. I think you dream about as a kid. You know, when you're winning the FA Cup, especially in the lower league, that's the uh, the FA Cup is a competition where you can draw a big boy out. So I think not just myself, but everyone in the team is going to be looking forward to this one coming up. Yeah, I mean, you've seen the likes of Chorley uh, beat Derby, although it was a, a, a under-strength Derby team. But then we saw today a Crawley team but smash, you'd have to say, a Leeds team, which is absolutely mm -hmm. tearing apart some Premier League teams. This must give you an added little bit of hope that there could be an upset in there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, 
some you know Premier League teams, especially go at Leeds going away to Crawley, you know, with the type of style of play Crawley will play, you know, you won't get many teams like in the Premier League. Um, you know, probably more physical and you know bumping people and run, just runners in behind really. So um, you know, we'll look on our game uh, tomorrow what we can do and you know we've been playing well this season so hopefully we can you know take our own game into it and show them what we can do yeah. just watch out for that ben rama yeah because um I've been I imagine, yeah. watching his uh his, his skills so yeah, uh, yeah. watch out for him are there any there there are any players that you're worried about in the team besides ben what rama <laughs> just worried about going shoulder to shoulder with antonio Oh yeah, it's, it's a unit, isn't he? It's a unit. If you like running to a brick wall, yeah, he's a big lad, and he's yeah. and he's done non-league as well. So he, he knows about the, the the rough and tumble. He knows he knows the tricks of the game. So he won't be having none of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, think I think there's two of them that have come from non-league. I think that Bowen came from non-league as well. So you know, I don't think they were taking the game. I think you know it'll be one before the game. I think you know they'll come in respectful. Which is, you know, they should do, and uh, yeah, it should be a good game. Yeah, mm. definitely, definitely. How does Stockport play, um, Richie? Um, how, how, what type of side are you? How, how you got to be to West Ham tomorrow? To be fair, I think we've got a good variety. We can we can play. We've got the players there. We, we're lucky to have obviously an owner like Mark Stott take over, and we've, we've got a good squad. So I think depending on how, how teams set up and how they play and. and dictates how, how we want to play really the gaffer's got got good options there if we want to play get the ball down and play we can if we want to go quite direct and play for second mm. balls or use Reedy's pace up top we, we've got that option so I think we, we're spoilt for choice really in that sense um, yeah. but in a certain way of playing I, I don't think, I think we, we're quite a ball team really you know um, it's just when, when the pitches start to turn you can't really play that style of, of football. You've got to be mm. more direct and play percentages when when you when when the pitches do turn. Mm. Uh, but I think we have we've got that set up, and like I said, we've got we've got them options that if if we do need to start playing like that, we we can do that. Right, yeah. Are you a left back, um, Jamie, or are you you a centre back? I'm not not. No, I'm, sure. a, I'm a I'm a centre back. Uh, can play left of a free hour. Oh, I can, you know, I can do a job at full back. Yeah, I, I wasn't too so sure because it says you're a centre back, but then I, I see a clip of you doing a cross and putting it on someone's head, and I thought uh, he looks uh, a bit like human Tierney. Well, I'll mix uh, it up. He's yeah. like a cross <laughs> it on someone's head. Was it? Was okay, it already? Was it Richie? It was already put. Say that again. Was it Sorry, already put on? No, was it, it was already? Connor Jennings. Is that the one you're talking about? To, to get us through an extra time, Connor Jennings were in it. Yeah, it was a great. Uh, cross. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was a great ball in. Yeah, he, 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 yeah. I he thought that's, let that's, us know that's, every that's day how much cross. of a good ball it was. That was. I thought that was some cross from the centre half. <laughs> yeah. been Are you happy to be at home, or would you wish you was away? Jamie, you uh, answering that? Yeah, you know I, no, I'm I, like I'm happy to be at home. I think you know, away it can sort of be. Seen as a day out, if you know from some teams, but uh, yeah, I think the, even the fans can't get in. I, I think when we seen the draw, everyone was hoping that the fans could come back in, but uh, make you know, I know there's only be like 2,000, possibly 4,000 in there, but it would have been electric. But um, I think I think we'll we'll see ourselves have a chance, um, at home rather than more, more so than away. I think you know, we know you know what the turf's like at our pitch and. How to play the pitch as well, so mm. I think that's going in our favour, and yeah, we'll see what happens on the day. I think if you, I think, if you beat sorry, if you beat West Ham as well, who are you wanting in the next round? Man United. <laughs> <laughs> man, you, it's always Man U, isn't it? It's you always Old can. Trafford. Well, you know, Man United, you know, <laughs> United it's always Old Trafford. Team. He knows a good team. <laughs> <laughs> he knows a team he's he's he could beat. Fan, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Funny um, enough, yeah, the last team I played for uh, was uh, was Southport, and I played against Macclesfield, and I think Connor Jennings was up front in that game. So that's funny, like my last um, the last pro team that I played for. So crazy, still playing, right? Wow. Yeah. Still playing, yeah, and still doing well to be fair as well, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. As that's you good, said, yeah. uh, an important part tomorrow is uh, 
knowing your pitch, I think that could be playing to your uh, playing to your favour. Who who's who would you say is your main danger, man? Um, that could really cause West Ham some trouble. Besides yourselves, obviously. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, to be fair, I think we've got quite a few. We've obviously Connor Jennings has got that quality, and um, you've got John Rooney there. You can, you can cause a lot of teams clever with clever on the ball, and you've got mm-hmm. Reedy's pace up top, who's who's on good form. I think we've we've got quite a lot of players, and at the minute are, are on form and um, full of confidence, which can only help us obviously playing a team like West Ham. We've got that belief. You know, we beat we beat Rochdale, who are a good outfit in League One. Who, so I think mm-hmm. we're, we're full of confidence. And we'll be ready to uh, to give it a good go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They, they're known for a few cup shocks, West Ham as well, aren't they? Okay. Yeah, they they are. They are. They they're one of <laughs> We'll be yeah, rooting for you. I know we've got Roshan coming on now. Uh, we'll we'll be we'll be uh, rooting for the Stockport County boys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> boys, thank you very much for coming on. Um, we'd love to have you on again. Uh, Hopefully you get through to the next round. If you do, try and get a. We we'll give you a link. You can come and join us live straight away. Or so. Yeah, uh, we'll on straight away if we get through. Yeah, that'd be quality. Uh, boys, yeah, <laughs> thank you very much for coming on. We'd definitely love to get you on again soon. But um, good luck for tomorrow as well. Yeah, good luck. Cheers. Good luck, Jamie. Cheers. Good luck. Good luck. Right. Thanks for coming on. Take care, boys. Thanks right. for coming on. Speak to you soon. Speak to you soon. All the best, guys. All right. All right. Ooh. So I'll tell you what, I fancy him actually. I tell you, Russia is listening, isn't he? Now, Rush has <laughs> be up in a minute. <laughs> That's all right. You can say all you want while he's trying to sign in, probably. No, but they, uh, are, they are known West Ham for slipping up. They are. Quite but do you know what it is? I, I think, sure I think um, there's been many a West Ham manager in the past that have not taken the, the, the FA Cup so seriously, maybe due to the fact that they're concentrating on the league or something. Um, but it, it has been many a manager that have sort of kind of just dismissed it um yeah. which I, I don't i don't understand that uh, you know David as well, always takes it serious Go on. maybe as well like i don't know nathan might know maybe like for the players it might be hard to get up for a game like that whereas you've got the players at the lower league teams and like you know like the cliche it's like their cup final they're so pumped for it and the mm. premier league players like they maybe can't be asked i think it's just going to be a bit of a walkover yeah, yeah you don't want to play yeah uh, you don't want to play away you know, like if you're playing away games at their stadium and stuff. You horrible, know, really horrible dressing room. Yeah. yeah. So oh. it's really like it's <laughs> young boys who are not trying, not in the side, to basically, you know, stake their claim, and you usually get a game off. So I remember, like, you start the season, I play the first game, and then there'll be a cup game, and then you, ah, oh, Nate, you don't have to come today. You know, you can have, have take the day off from playing. Obviously, Absolutely. come and watch the match, but um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was like you're, you know, you're not, you're not playing today. And then you'll be back in for the league game next week. So, obviously, you pick and choose the, the players um, who are normally starting most of the time, and then um, obviously take the rest at that time. But we should obviously the team has to have a good enough side to go and be able to do that. If they haven't, then you play your mm. first team. Or if you're under the cosh, you know you're not having a good season. You're gonna have to play a first team because you can't be losing to a lower league yeah. team to put more pressure on you. So yeah, it does yeah. work in yeah. roundabout. So. <laughs> Do you think that's what happened to Leeds today? Because um, I, I saw Jack Harrison come on when Leeds kind of needed a bit of a, a boost, and I really rate Jack Harrison. He's he's got that. He's, he's very. He's always busy. Um, but he just didn't even seem like he was up for it today. And it, it, they made subs, and their subs just didn't bring anything to the team. It's what happens sometimes. It just does. It's like you always. The manager always reiterates. Like, listen. These are banana skins. Like you mm-hmm. better be up for it today, because if th- they will be, so it doesn't matter about your ability. Your ability will take care of everything else. But just be up for it, and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, you always say that. Like, yeah, you better be ready, guys, because if you fall today, you're running. You know, you're running. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, right, we better win this game, guys. Let's go and win it. So it's it's a it's a test of your character as well, because if you want to make it to the high levels in the game, you got to be able to go anywhere and still perform. And yeah. think about back in the day when you're young, wherever you're playing, you just was happy to play whoever it was and beat them. And if it's a little team, go and get your hat trick. Go get your mm. more more than three goals yeah. if you can. You know, get your uh, you know your confidence up for the next game. Mm-hmm. So it, you can also use it for that. Um, it's not that everyone wanted to not play, but it's just one of them things. You know, if it's an away game somewhere, you never want to play them games. It's, 
you always I used to look at the games and go Burnley away I don't want to play there mm. you know or stop uh, uh, Burnley away <laughs> you know, night on this Tuesday disgusting don't want to play there you know <laughs> you know? hey, you're, not, you're, not, you're not changing this you're not changing this couple of stereotype you're not you're not dispelling it Nathan you, 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 you're adding more to it mate no they're tough mate when you go and play Tramway away and they're ground they're, they're, they make it hard for you, make the pitch not the best, and then it's yeah. a slog to win the match. And you just have to <laughs> fight it out and win. We, we managed to, but it was a proper yeah. fight. It's like, oh, good job, this is over. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the game, one nil wins. <laughs> yeah. Three points to yeah. get out, Nathan, yeah. Nathan, you know, you've been in the boys' this situation, yeah? I mean, they must they be feeling that. When I was just sorry, the that boy, again, sorry. Buzz, Who's situation? Must... You in the boys who just come on, the two boys, yeah. like they're playing probably the biggest match of their lives um, tomorrow. I mean, they must. Uh, have you ever been in that situation where you bet? Of course, they must of course. Feeling. I just like, know, I like to know how they feel. I like to know the. It feels amazing when you know you're playing against a team you've watched on TV all the time. You know, you're playing at the lower levels and you've never played a big team. Then all of a sudden you've drawn them. You're like, oh my gosh. I'm actually going to be on TV now. I'm going to be playing with these guys. Like, they're against me now. So, that feeling is always the best. Like, you've got to savour them moments, you know. You're like, okay, West Ham. My gosh, I'm playing against this guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. All these guys, amazing. Make sure you record that. However you record it. I want to watch every minute of everything I do or everything the team does. Whatever. You just got it. That's how you feel. And the minute you're going out on a pitch, you're just looking at them going... Wow, you know, these are the, <laughs> these I, I, are the I guys that, that yeah. watch it. So, yeah, there's no yeah. explanation for the feeling because, uh, obviously, in a cup game, you get that chance to play, but then mm. there's also another feeling when you're in the same league as them and you're playing with them. It's like, huh, I'm actually in the same league playing against Cristiano Ronaldo. What's going on here? Like, yeah. it's mad, it's a mad feeling. Like, I belong with these guys, you know, yeah. it's not that feeling like, oh, yeah. we've got a cup game, great, amazing. This is now, I belong with these guys. You know, it's yeah, weird. Yeah. It's, it's a really weird feeling, but it's, it's the best feeling in the world, to be fair. No, I bet. What was your prep the night before? Could you sleep? Did you have any problems sleeping? Was it nerves? Just ready no. for it? No, it's just normal. Like, for me, I've always just been normal. You just get excited, like, like uh, when you're little and you're waiting for Christmas Day and all that. And uh, you can sleep, can't you? You, you go to bed and you, you just want to sleep because you know you'll wake up and you have to run downstairs. <laughs> So Early. that's the kind of feeling you like. Today's the day, right? Mm. Today's the day. Let's get this on. Like you yeah. just can't wait to get it on and get on the pitch for the warm up. Yeah, yeah. And get the team talk done. It's just like you're savoring that whole day, the coach journey, going to look at the stadium. I remember when I first went to United, playing United away, and I'm driving up and I'm seeing the stadium. Like you're just taking it all in. Then you see the changing room and then you're like, yeah. Then you go down the tunnel, and you walk onto the pitch, you go up the hill onto the pitch and you're like, all these, you know, all these supporters. <laughs> it's like, like Nathan, snap <laughs> out of it. You're just a great feeling, you know what I mean? So, it's, yeah, no, uh, I bet, I bet, you've got to I bet, save I that feeling. And, um, yeah. Continue doing your job when you're on the pitch, obviously. Don't be starstruck on the pitch. But yeah. you what, was your, what was your best FA Cup moment then? I, I, in the FA Cup, I did really well. To be fair, I, I was top scorer. I think I top, was I. No, it was a Carling Cup that was, wasn't it? Um, I think we played. We played a lot of um, uh, prem teams when we were with, when I was with Wigan. We beat mo a lot of them as well. Like we beat West Brom in the FA Cup. I think it was the FA Cup. I scored the hat trick in that game. We played Man City and beat them one nil. Um, then we played Fulham. We beat them two one. I scored two in that game. Then we had we then we got Blackburn, and they um, had York and Cole up front. Tough game. So, you know Tough game. <laughs> we lost. I think we lost one nil or something like that. But look how we got quite far. Yeah. We played a yeah, lot yeah. of prem teams and beat them all. Uh, and then we came up against obviously two of the best. The best obviously a really great partnership in them two. Even after their time at United, so it was great yeah. to see them playing and. Um, yeah, that was probably one of the best runs I've had. Um, wow. Yeah, I had loads of runs every season. I always scored yeah. a lot of goals in that. My, that's probably my best record. I've got like nearly the same amount of goals to games in cups. If you look on Wiki, you probably see it somewhere. A lot of, it's a good record. So, All right. Yeah, but what did the, what did the cup mean to you, Nathan? Was it like 
you know, I'm, I mean, every time it comes around for me, I'm like, wow, I love it. You know, it, it, people keep telling me it's not the same it was. I mean, for you, was it's it? always was been it the same. It's yeah. the FA Cup, Carly Cup. You know, if you can get to play against the big boys, it's still great. Like, I don't care. I'm playing against, even if they ain't got all their boys playing. I remember we, I was at West Brom. We were playing Arsenal, actually. We played Arsenal. And, um... Ali Adier, is it Adier? Um, Ali Adier. As well. Yeah. Um, it was nil-nil. It was just about to go to penalties. And I was like, yeah, let's get to penalties. I'm score my penalty because I score all my penalty. <laughs> and I got sent off at West Brom. Oh. I got sent off. You know when you slide, when the player's going to play the ball up the line and you slide to try and block yeah. it? Yeah. And oh, then they yeah, say yeah. that they've been hit. Like, the, oh! Yeah. <laughs> 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 and he goes like that. He jumps on the floor. He's like, oh, and he gives me a straight red. I'm like, how are you going to be a straight red? Straight like, red? To be fair, strikers bit. can't tackle, so... I didn't even tackle. I, I am setting the recorder right now. Where is that? We're going to find that, it. <laughs> what round was that? What round was that? I can't remember. But I remember, obviously... I was thinking I'm going to be like the hero in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> and then I was the villain. <laughs> Wasn't that the same got... match where Julio Batista was playing as well? well or am I thinking penalties. another I one? I think he did play, yeah. I think he did yeah. play. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah you got um, 15 Rome. goals in 17 games. In, in, uh, in the... That's unreal. Yeah, what? yeah. That's unreal. <laughs> I'll tell you. Very good. Let's go pick that up, Wiki. <laughs> Come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Yeah, knew. Cristiano Ronaldo levels, that. Eh? All right, all right. <laughs> well, when we do a transfer exchange dream team, like fantasy football, not fantasy football, like we, we go and challenge other like, channels, you're in my team. <laughs> so I know uh, we need a physio. After hearing that, after hearing what Nathan just said there, that record, David Allen was sent back. I, I, you know, you can start centre-back. Uh, everyone, make sure you <laughs> like and subscribe. I see a lot of people in, in the comment section. I see a lot of people watching right now. Make sure I see that many likes, please. And some new subscriptions. I want to see some new names on this. Some new subscriber names. We're just about to hit the 500 mark. Once you hit 500, I hear it propels to 1,000 within a couple of weeks, maybe. Come on. This help me out. Oh, it's talking, hit that like um, button. Right. Talk, talking about different like games and grounds and stadiums Nathan what, what I wanted to know is obviously being a big United fan playing at, playing at Old Trafford was, was quality were there any other like grounds that you like really enjoyed playing at yeah to be fair Newcastle is a really nice stadium um, everything's like quite new pitch is amazing um, and it's just lovely to play there um, they had a lot of fans down there as well on the day <laughs> Um, so it's a really good place to play, and it's just it's, there's some stadiums you just go to and you just love it. And uh, Newcastle yeah. was one that just sticks out in my mind. Um, I didn't get to play at the Arsenal new stadium. I went to Highbury, um, but I wasn't playing really. I played for maybe five minutes in that game. So I remember when Henri, the first time I watched Henri in the flesh, and he stood still on the pitch during the match for more than a minute. Like while the yeah. game's going on, you can think about how long that is in the game. It's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> still, <in> a, <laughs> I don't run nowhere. He's chasing nothing, <laughs> and then he scores. He gets through, slots it in. <laughs> oh my gosh, this guy's amazing. <laughs> so, that was funny. funny. How are you doing, Roshan? We're joined by Obama Young here. Look at yeah, that, honey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we well, well spotted there, Simon. Yeah. Well, that is a Premier League kind of hoodie. Oh, Love that. I thought Oba, I thought Oba came on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Roshan? Yeah, game I'm tomorrow? Okay. Yeah. Nervous? No, far from very confident. Hey, very even very after confident. watching, even after watching Crawley against Leeds. Yeah, even after that, I mean, it's Leeds United, so you know, I mean, Leeds, they're, they're, they're hit and miss every now and then. So, for now. Right. Well, you, did you and jump West... off your seat, though, when that hit the crossbar? Did you jump off your seat? A little bit, a little bit, I admit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop the voice saying pretty confident, Roshan, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, yeah, 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 the great chance to, you know, advance and do well in the Cup, so. Yeah. This this is an opportunity to try and to try and get a nice little run there, yeah. Yeah, I've I've always been in the opinion about you know West Ham 
my struggles in the cups over the years. You know, I always remember that um, about five, about six years ago now, when he lost five nil in the third round against Nottingham Forest. And I was like, my goodness, like this is just like what's going on with this club? Just can't even take the cup serious. But hopefully this year will be a change, and we've seen it a bit different in the cups this season, where you know you got small clubs, you know, causing upset, and. Previously, West Ham have struggled in the League Cup. That's really done really boring. So hopefully now in the FA Cup, we can say, you know what, now's the chance for us to become, um, you know, a cup team that we've had in the competition. Yeah. Um, any, any, any team news yesterday uh, for tomorrow? Any, any players out, players back from injury? I reckon uh, there'll be a lot of rotation. So mm -hmm. I reckon you can see um, Frederick Alves make his debut. Uh, Centre-back West Ham signed. I've heard a lot of good things about him, so there's high hopes for him for the future. Uh, a player that West Ham fans are going absolutely crazy about at the minute, a young player called uh, Mipo De Beko, striker, a highly rated striker, in fact. He's been training with the first team last week, or was rather training with the first team last week, so there's a feeling he could be on the bench. Because with Sebastian Haller obviously joining Ajax, I don't think Antonio, I mean, Moise will risk it and play Antonio for the full 90 minutes. It just doesn't make sense. So yeah. there's a chance he will be on the bench and perhaps we'll see Amalenko players as a striker to see how he gets on there. And Nathan Holland, another promising young prospect. It's likely right, he's going to go out alone this month. Yeah. Now I've heard a lot of clubs are interested in finding him. So it could be his last game before yeah, he goes out and gets some first experience elsewhere. A left back to look out right. for. Uh, Emmanuel Longello, you know, he made his first team debut in a Carabao Cup against Hull City. So another young prospect, you know, West Ham are hoping will do well. And yeah, they're the ones to look out for in terms of young prospects for um, for tomorrow. So you think it's a it's a good mm. opportunity to get kickstart a, a a run, which will continue this good form that you're in uh, this season, and it's continuing still. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And obviously, giving fringe page if you were to call it about a chance to say, hey, show me what you can do. Give me more of a selection selection headache, so that when it comes to the game against uh, I think it's Burnley next, that uh, you know be another tough one for me. The, the thing I've enjoyed most about covering West Ham this season is that you can tell there's been like a more emphasis on having high standards. Mm -hmm. Nathan will say with his playing career, if, if you know the same team week in, week out, and I mean, what's the point? You might as well go home. But if we all have a chance of being involved, if we all motivate each other week in, week out, mm -hmm. then that will just drive performances because we all know one bad game or one bad transition and our place on the threat. So I've seen that a lot in the Moisture season. Yeah, yeah, I think that's been a massive difference in in uh, a West Ham team at the moment. Massive, massive difference. Um, just wanted to ask you about some. I said a lot of transfer news at the moment. I know I spoke to you, asked you about a couple of uh, rumours that were going about, and you shut them down. But since then, after yeah. you told me that it was going to be quiet, I've seen nothing but West Ham rumours. I was just seeing yeah. Sebastian uh, Haller uh, go to um, Ajax. What was the reasoning behind him leaving? Um, I know you mentioned that he wasn't happy, they weren't happy with his uh, output. Ultimately, it comes down to the fact that he just wasn't good enough, really. Oh, really? Good enough yeah. First time. I've seen that too. Chances. Yeah, I had so many chances. I mean, I feel like the final opportunity when um, I put a tough that Hampton injury against Man City, it was like, all right, here you go. Here's your chance. Like, show me what you can do. Like, come on now. You've been there for like 18 months. Show me what you can do, Hannah. And ultimately, he didn't take his opportunity. He scored a goal against Sheffield United. He scored a good goal against Crystal Palace. But if you don't cover West Ham, you think, oh, it's back up to you, but if you actually watch it week, week out, if you lack a work rate, it's a bit lazy. My biggest frustration is that West Ham is easy to mark. Like, you're watching yeah. them, and, like, the oh, defenders are tough time. Are they walking off the pitch? No, my goodness, that was, that was, that was, that was back in the day this afternoon. And really, I'm a fan of that. And in, in, in Alice's defence, the only time I thought he was like decent and he came to justify his price tag was when he played alongside Antonio. That's the only time I thought, hey, he's a good player. And it's a bit of a that, shame because... Antonio finished running. Yeah, in his first season, right, they looked really good. In like, the first two games, they looked really good. And then Antonio mm. comes to that handful and gets moved to the county. He got about three or four months after. And then Alice form up because he came up alongside him. That's not really how you get it. Out of them, he's not fast that role. He just got his own down here after that. So, you know, it's a bit of a shame that injury happened because you could have seen perhaps a 4 for 2 and then maybe on a different case, uh, Halla would have thrived at West Ham. Did he, was he the one who missed the, the, the that easy chance against United? Was it him? 
he got through one on one and then he just fumbled and fell on the floor. What, what which one? My United, Sheffield United. No. Wasn't that West He's West Ham? Well, did it West Ham weren't they two 0 up and nearly would have went three 0 up? But he, he got round. I swear, wasn't he one on one? Did he have an open goal or something? Am I remembering? Oh, remember this wrong? I'm sure it was Harla that got through and then he just missed missed the like didn't even shoot in the end. He had an open goal and he just didn't get the shot off and didn't score. So I'll have to check that out. And there's, there's been um, who, who are West Ham after? Look, they're after a striker, aren't they? See that they're yeah. looking for a replacement for Haller. Yeah, see, signing a striker is the, is the priority for West Ham right now. But mm -hmm. if you couple West Ham, or if you support the club, you will know every window, every player under the sun will be linked to move to West Ham. It's just yes. the team. Every yeah. window. As a national fan, I can agree with this. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give an example, right? So obviously, hello from Phil Tyax. That day evening, um, there was a report that Moshe Dembele, the uh, former striker, the former striker, that West Ham made contact with him. So immediately, I'm not looking to with whoever reported it, but me, I'm thinking, that is nonsense. That, that, that is nonsense. So yeah. obviously... Myself and others, we reached out to Vols come for him, just uh, lost his belly, and they were like, Yeah, that's, that's not true. Let's have made no contact. The player had no interest in the move to the club. And I'm thinking, See, is there another example? Like, another this false report to get fans excited when it's not going to happen. Obviously, yeah. we put a story that's going to say, Listen, he's not interested in the move, it's not going to happen. But since then, oh, like, I've seen 20 names. I've seen about yeah. 20 strikers. I think I like Strike um, yeah, Alex, um, Frankfurt, like, everyone. Everyone, so. mm -hmm. I've been told uh, one back. today. I have been told one today. I'm going to ask you to see if you can clear it up for us. But apparently, West Ham have submitted a 30 million bid for the, the Watford Ishmael Asar. Yeah, I've heard that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah that today. Yeah, but I wouldn't have been that. That, so many that makes sense, <laughs> doesn't it? That makes sense. That does make sense, that one. I could yeah. see. I could, yeah, just, I'm not sure. Just like. Yeah, no. <laughs> he's not yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Um, uh, I can't, why would West Ham spend so much money in the playing season championship right now? He's not particularly thriving this season as well. So there's mm. that as well. And I've been told right now it's not a priority. Obviously, it's still a priority for the striker, but we're not in a rush to bring him on right now. Uh, yeah. Wait a little bit, see what's back in the market, see who comes in the right price. And if you look at how West Ham are in the market in general, that's how they operate. Last January, yeah. Future was mm. signed. It was signed like two days before deadline day. Jared Bowen was signed deadline day. So we're not a club who do their business early. They tend to wait, yeah. see what's happening, and then they make they, they um, you know act and, and bring in their player. So right now, yeah, that player, this player, that player, that player, this player. It's like, right, it's not. Let's just calm down a little bit. What names? Yeah, Josh King and Olivier Giroud. Olivier Giroud, I would say no, because it's a similar sort of player to um, Hala, and he doesn't sort of fit the mantra of more he's of bringing in a young enough and common player. Josh King, um, that's one that could potentially happen. Could okay. potentially happen. But the thing with Josh okay. King, a lot of people are interested in signing him right now. Due to the fact that being a bit uncertain, you know, the pandemic, there's not being no gate money coming in and stuff like that. Mm. The government have to think smart. Josh King, 28, I'll come in the summer, so he's not going to be a, you know, a high price that. Bournemouth will come on for him. So that's one that yeah. could happen, but it's not just West Ham. You've got other club uses like Aston Villa, you've got West Brom, other club uses from as well. So, yeah, that could, that could go on for quite some while with Josh King on. You don't fancy bringing an Altovich back, Roshan? Uh, no chance. <laughs> oh, no chance. <laughs> oh, <whoa. laughs> I'm not even a West Ham fan. That angered me. Yeah. I've read your piece, mate. I know how yeah. you feel about it. <laughs> Yeah, because I was sort of like, listen, this guy's not deserving of another chance because it's just the way he's sort of agitated for a move to leave to China. And he's like, oh, you know what? Let me sign a contract, an extension, get more money. Yeah, and then he's absolutely garbage after that. Didn't score any goals. And in the last two games of the season, he scored like three goals. And it's now like, oh, let's bring him back. I'm like, no chance. No chance. And the people sort of said, like, I'd rather have Pyre back than an Artovic. And that's a lot. Yeah. Of this. yeah. I was like, you know what? I just want to quit the auction, Nathan. Let's say, right? You know, you. I don't know, let's say Wigan, for example. And I'm saying hypothetically, I'm picturing a scenario. Obviously, you and Jason Roberts, brilliant form and whatnot. And let's say they sort of put on the transfer request, agitated to move, and you're upset about that because you and him have a good relationship, you played well. And then 
let's say two seasons down the line, he comes back. Uh, obviously, having you know upset fans or whatnot. What, what would be just the reaction to that? How, how would you players respond if that were to be the case? I'd be like, hurry up and get your ass back here. <laughs> <laughs> He's basically finished shutting down. So we can continue where we left off. That's what I've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was not yeah, noticed. Serious. He's muted. Yeah, that's quality. That's, that's, quality. That's definitely what I'd um be be saying to him. Obviously, it's a bit different when you when you. All depends how you did, isn't it? When you leave, um, if you're doing that as well as me and Jace did then obviously yeah. everyone wants that to happen again so no matter what happens if i was to, was to go back with him or whatever or that happens again whoever the two are I'm, I'm guessing they'd like it unless obviously we're far too many years down the line and they're not not the same player then obviously yeah. it won't make sense so i know what you mean by that side of it but um yeah. i guess um even we can now they probably want me and jace back even i can't move yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> minutes, so. Mate, you, you've already promised me. I've asked you what you're doing for the next six bumps at, at Arsenal, mate. You said you were just going to get fit and come back and go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I've got my insanity fitness every day, but I'm just keeping. Right, that's <laughs> what you're doing, Sean T. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both. Of them. I finished the first one, and I'm on the insanity max thirty now. So, but I've been picking oh. up injuries. Can't hear you. Mm. Your, your sound's gone. While he's fixing his, his audio, Harley did yeah. this a one on one. He, he went round <laughs> the keeper. <laughs> and he, didn't score. Oh, okay. he oh, okay. went round the keeper and didn't score. He was in the oh, middle yeah. of the goal, by the way, not on the sides. He was in the middle yeah. of the goal. I was thinking, oh no, 3 0. No. And then he just gave it back to us. Couldn't believe it. Oh, wow. Can you hear me now? Do you think uh, West Ham would be good with someone like um, Igalo on loan till the end of the season? Come on, you. I think he'd be good. It's not a bad cup. Yeah, it's not a bad yeah. cup. I don't think West Ham bringing still stick with the fossil if you're bringing a younger striker. Because the, the danger of having someone on loan, they'll do well, and then ultimately they have to go back to their parent club. So you're always with West Ham trying to find a permanent who they can look to build on. Someone will have resale value and they can get the best like, part of three to four years. Out of them, I, I was playing last week after Halle was going back. You know, they have high hopes and they've been monitoring Ivan Tony. What the danger of that is, he's gonna cost a lot of money right now because he's doing one in the yeah. championship, so he's not gonna come with a I saw last week as well, the same day Halle was sold. I mean, there's about 50 names after he was gone, but I sort of saw it, Eddie and Ketia. But again, that's another player <laughs> asking to come with a lot of money. So it's a sort of a thing yeah. where West Ham have to be smart of how they operate because. One of the things, one of the reasons why they want to they leave it a bit late in terms of bringing someone because now clubs only have a bit of money because obviously they sold up Hala to Ajax, so they want to be a bit smart, not sort of pressure into get someone because of fans and whatnot. So yeah, another reason why they'll be a bit late and, and wait a bit to bring someone in. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah who realistic? Who, who is there realistically you you, who you would bring in for West Ham now? It was realistic. Realistically, definitely Josh King. Because obviously, proven experience of playing in the Premier League of Bournemouth. Danny Ings? Danny Ings? Oh, no. Danny Ings. What, is That's he going to leave something? I don't know about that. That's going to be a lot of money. Yeah, again, now I've got 30 more plus for Danny Ings. And West Ham. Yeah. The, thing is, mm. the thing right now is, if you look back on West Ham track record in terms of signing strikers, it's been absolutely abysmal. Absolutely mm. abysmal. Mm. 50 strikers. Yeah. Come back like a bit of an outfit, uh, the other cycle, Andrea, you and maybe a few others. What maybe six? The Canio, the Canio. Out. <laughs> no, that, that was the yeah. uh, Sullivan and Gold Era. Ian Dowie. But after that, I mean, I'm thinking of Mido, Benny McCarthy, I'm thinking of all these other players. Who, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, players like mm. that. I don't even know all the goal for West Ham, so it's been an abysmal record in terms of signing and trikers and 45 minutes for Ohala. That's what they sold him for 20 and a half billion, so that's what almost 25 Ooh. million lost. Wow, mm. yeah, so 18 months, plus, yeah, it's not a smart business, so yeah, I don't yeah. know. Why yeah. I went I'm gonna apply for the um, the scouting job there, then for the uh... <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, I wonder if Charlie Austin would have been a share. I mean, would he score goals yeah. for West Brom? Would he have He's scored goals player. for West Ham? He, he can get goals. He's gone to QPR, he? He, he needs to play though, doesn't he? 
when I think okay, I, I can't remember what year it was, but last time I actually got signed Charlie Austin on it, and I think he felt his medical. The knee, the, the That's yeah, knee. Yeah. yeah, it was a knee. Yeah. Yeah. There was a bit of a bad yeah. between Charlie Austin and West Ham because of that. All right, all right. So, big game tomorrow. You feel like it's going to be an easy one, you're saying. In the bag, in the next round, bring on the next the next, uh, the next, next whipping boys. That's what Roshan Thomas is saying from the athletic. And, and it's not me saying that sort of being uh, arrogant. It's just what I've seen. Because you feel... And, and the good, if you asked the question last year on the Pellegrini, it would have been a totally different answer. It worked in the way. And the fact he's giving young players a chance and they're doing well, rinse players coming in, you know, sort of taking their chances as well. So, yeah, I feel like it would be a, a good result for them. Uh, yeah, will you be happy if he plays um, the kids, the academy kids, like a bit of a mix? Will you be happy with that if they play in yeah, that type of team tomorrow? That. I feel like a lot of fans will as well because they don't want to give them a chance. Like, for example, mm. uh, you know, Hash Nash be right back, he played well when he had a chance. We saw Ben Johnson given a chance when he played against I think it was Palace. He scored his first goal for the club. So that's the beauty of what we've seen in the Moyes, you know, giving youngsters a chance and saying, show me what you can do. Show me what you can do. And, and you know, tell me why he deserves to be in the team. My frustration with Pellegrini is he wasn't giving young players a chance. Academy was doing great. Mm. You have a young player like, uh, obviously, for still now, but a young player like Anthony Scully was doing great things. And he's doing good things now at Lincoln, but he never got a chance at West Ham. So, yeah, it's great to see that. So, I feel like a lot of fans will be happy to see, like, a rotation of um, young players involved. And you, you recently just done an article um, with The Athletic for the top 20 young Premier League players. Who was the, who was the player that you, you picked for West Ham? I picked um, me, Paul, the back on the striker I mentioned earlier, the highly rated mm-hmm. striker. And is he, is he, you think he's going to be involved tomorrow? Yeah, there's a good chance he could be on the bench tomorrow. Because as I mentioned, I doubt more you want to risk it and play Antonio for the full 90 minutes, considering he's really and truly the only recognised striker at West Ham right now. So, yeah, if Yarmolenko doesn't start a striker, then who knows? He could start. But those close to me for say, yeah, he's likely to be on the bench. So, right. that, we'll, def- that's- we'll definitely get to Rome to do a little uh, player profile and see, see yeah. what he's about. What kind he- of a striker is he? Yeah, he used to be on the books at Man United, and he turned down he turned down the deal at Man United to join West Ham because ah, he didn't. See I a know that. Yeah, yeah, I know about him now. Yeah, yeah, he didn't very, see a path yeah, in the first at United, so he thought, let me just join West Ham to give young players a chance. And he was doing good at the start of the season. He was doing really good. He scored two goals against Southend in the EFL Cup. I was at the game, and no joke, like two runs in front of me was David Moyes and um, and the first team coach Paul Nevlin. Mm-hmm. So. Obviously, the media get there early, and then about 10 minutes into the game, you just see Moyes and, and, and the first team coach roll up. So you're thinking, oh, okay, you're here to watch the U team, which is good on yeah. you because you're not managed to do that. He could have used the Netflix and you know, having, the, having a nice cold guard aside of, but I thought, you know what, let me just come to, <laughs> come to the ground and watch the young players. So, in that match, um, Newport scored two goals. And you're thinking, okay, good performance. Carabao Cup game against Charlton coming up soon, he could be involved. Obviously, before that match, he suffered the hamstring injury. Oh. Uh, for about what, two and a half months. So, yeah, unfortunately, you know, timing wasn't the best for him at that point. Yeah. But he's back now, he's fully recovered. And yeah, people support him to use that determination to get back in, back into the team. So, yeah, I hope he's given a chance. All right, all right, all right. Cool. Thank you very much for coming on tonight, uh, Roshan, and talking about and just spelling some of these uh, transfer rumors because there's going to be a load, which means yeah. that. I'm going to be rowing up in your DMs, constantly asking you. <laughs> 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 what about this one? So, what about this one? What about yeah, this exactly. one? <laughs> so I apologise now. But... <laughs> like, I'm, not even, I'm not even knocking the reporters you are, but to be honest, a lot of it is clickbait. Like clicks yeah. it happens a lot. Transfers, person, and what's happening. Obviously, fans are like thinking it's people money, and clubs having like 200 million to spend mm. on players on the case. So that's why you get so many names mm. thrown about to different clubs where half time, half time mm. is not. So. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, just quickly before you go, have all, have all the um, press conferences stopped now? I mean, you're not going to the game tomorrow, you're not... Uh, the, the... No, I'll be at the game tomorrow. You are? All right, cool. Yeah, I'll be at the game tomorrow, I'll yeah. be at the game tomorrow. Yeah, so sometimes, if yeah, it's like nice. home, if obviously you've got football home, like, but sometimes you've got to go to the away games because obviously with the pandemic, you want to be a bit cautious in terms of who they're allowing, but yeah, yeah that's how they set up is now. 
right, all right. Cool, cool mate. Thank cool, you very mate. much Enjoy for the game. Us And Nathan, thank you for, very, uh, for joining us tonight. No Good luck on oh, Tuesday. Big yeah, games getting to for the league. Well, Good. I think Simon, the whole is because of my uh, 800 grand a year contract come on at the flex, so that's why. <laughs> 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 uh, if they're looking for a presenter for one of their podcasts, maybe give me a shout. I, I could do with an upgrade of my tracksuit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and a couple of studs on the shoulders. Yeah, with me and Kieran have a hat with a flatic on it. I want red <laughs> bottoms, red bottoms, <laughs> mate. Like, do this properly. Yeah, the red bottom. That's part of the plan. Honestly, the red bottoms. So you get get that in the package. All <laughs> oh, right, sweet. <laughs> you, get, you, know, you, you hook me up. All right, we'll sort this out soon. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, Rush. And thank you very much for joining us, mate. Cheers, Rush. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Nathan. Take care, See you. All well, right. at least we squashed the Eddie and Kettier, didn't we? Yeah, but Woo! it's not just that one. There's there's quite a few that um, have been shut down, um, and and even the ones where where we thought there's a bit of bit of legs in it, maybe potentially Olivier Giroud. Um, it seems that it's more likely to be a Josh Josh King in there involved in the transfer news. See, this is what we do, boys and girls. We hear a bit of transfer news, we put it out there. Mm. Just for the out. record, as we well, that that Ishmael Asar wasn't from my contacts it's from a new guy mm. that i've been speaking to who's west ham but the thing is as well yeah mm. this is I, i've heard it i've heard it as well when, when, from, yeah someone. this is this is the thing when this is not people lying this major. is people hearing rumors so people mm. will hear a rumor people will hear something and this is not something that's out, out in the papers but people will hear it you hear a lot of stuff a lot on the grapevine in in and around the place talking to people you hear a lot of rumors that's when you go out and reach around out to other people and you, you fish out to your other contacts to see if this true. When you've got mm. um, uh, a West Ham correspondent of West Ham, uh, of, uh, of The Athletic, um, on, on it's probably one of the best places to ask, do you know what I mean? Um, so The, the, yeah. the thing is, the thing is <coughs> that West Ham must, must get a striker in the chance for a win, right? I, 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 they must do, surely. If to, to get to. rid of someone... But, yeah. He's right. He's right in saying um, they leave it late. Like he said, Jared Bowen. He didn't mention uh, uh, Ben Rama, which was done not just last day of the second part Two of weeks the UK. It was yeah. <laughs> it was on the last yeah. day of the UK one, but it was also done after that because they had an issues with um, the deal, which then had to be changed from a permanent deal to a loan um, because of um, oh, the yeah. issues with the with the agent. Mm with the agent's fee. So, and that was after the transfer deadline. So when they say mm. they leave it late at West Ham, they definitely leave it late. Yeah, yeah. it's very mm. tough to think of someone in their remit though. I I said Danny Ings, he, he would be in their remit, but as you said, like the, the, the money is money. ridiculous. But yeah. it, it's very hard to... It's very know, hard. One, especially, where, especially where Shen saying West Ham should potentially be looking for a younger striker. It, it, mm. That in itself brings a risk because you're gonna because he's younger, you're gonna have to pay more money for him. But paying more yeah. money for him, then it's it's the risk because then he's that that risk has got to pay off, and it's it's maybe worthwhile for West Ham getting in the striker that's going to do the business now, the right age, and then that younger one comes through the youth ranks and um, mm. is someone that they bring through uh, because spending twenty plus mil, thirty mil on a mm. on a young striker, even though that's what you want, it's it's maybe not, mm. not the right. I mean, route. Listening to Jerome and, and listening to you know Roshan today, it seems like they've they've got some decent stuff coming through though. Some decent players coming through. So mm. um they may be looking at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the they best should. thing with this coronavirus. The young kids are gonna get a chance now when they yeah. actually go out and get something. Mm -hmm. that a young yeah. kid can probably do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right, definitely. Right. Um, all right, all right. Before we get into the nitty-gritty of the transfer roundup, we're going to go to Jerome for the Guardian Top 60. How are you doing, Jerome? It's been, um, uh, it's been like I haven't heard from you all day uh, so far. I've been on the, I've been on the touch line. He, he's been warming up. He's been, been warming up on one of them. Not, he don't warm up running up and down a touchline. We've got one of them bikes for Jerome, yeah. like on the sidelines. He's, he's, he's the real yeah. deal, mate. I've got, I've got yeah. a <laughs> he's got a peloton on the side, mate. Yeah. Brilliant. Right, he's, he's Some people out. say he's pedaling right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's still looking about for that Yossi Ben Ayun. That's what that's what No, no, okay. no, no. We could have found him. We yeah. could oh, have we? found him. We yeah. could have found him. All right, watch this, right. 
Watch this, this, this face. face. <laughs> watch this face. And Jerome, let's get into the Guardian. Box. It's darkish, but watch this face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we found him. So we've got um, for the Guardian top 60, two players, I guess, um, similar positions, both attacking midfielders, both 17, mm-hmm. pretty much the next big thing of Moroccan football and the next big thing of Romanian football. So mm-hmm. we have um, Mohamed Amin Esahel. He's a 17-year-old attacking midfielder, plays in Mor- plays his football at his home country in Morocco, uh, plays for their under-17 side. Um, he is considered like the next big thing, the next big thing there. Plays a typical sort of, you can call it, I guess, like a number 10, plays in between the lines, finds pockets of space. Um, I understand he's got excellent awareness of like the forward runners. So that's him. Then we've got the Romanian um, youth international, 17 year old Stefan Bodistianu. Oh, now, yeah. yeah. Said that was some Vim, mate. That's been, that's you've been, been practicing. practicing. You've been practicing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So with him, something quite interesting. He joined, you know, the um, probably I guess Romania's most famous footballer, Georgi Hadji. Oh yeah. He, he, so he's got his own academy yeah. out there, mm-hmm. um, and he joined them when he was eleven years old, and he went straight from there to their. That's not like the feed. It's sort of the I guess feeder clinic of Georgi Hadji's team that he actually owns in the Romanian league. Um, oh. and that's what, they're called Vitoral Constantanta, and oh, that, and that well is and that is where he plays. He's he's already made his debut for them. He's played about ten times for them. Very skillful offensive midfielder. Someone that Hardy apparently thinks you know reminds yeah. him of himself. That sort yeah. that sort of player, a bit of a mm. playmaker. So yeah, they're the they're the guardian ones for today. Definitely, definitely ones to watch. Who's your favourite out of the two? Who, who you got high hopes for? I reckon if you know if he's good enough for Hardy, he's good enough for Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> all right you said it you said it all right thank you very much for that Jerome again please make sure you like and subscribe I want to see some more subscribers I want to get we should tonight we should be getting over that 500 mark 100% I think it was 4 498 let's get over to that 500 mark the next milestone is a thousand then it's the real deal then we're then we're cooking on gas after that uh, make sure you like make sure you share and thank you, everyone, in the comment section so far. It's buzzing at the moment. Um, obviously, everyone's enjoying the show. All right, all right. Let's get on to it. It is time for the well-renowned transfer roundup. Boom! I want to start off with something. So oh. the guy called the guy called Louis that messaged me as well on uh, Instagram and asked me to look for someone called uh, Ben, basically, for uh, Bournemouth Wood Town. I actually got in touch with Boreham Town myself and I found out that this person, Ben, uh, what was his surname now? Ben Hutchinson, I think it is. He asked me basically that he'd heard something called Ben Hutchinson is a striker and that he was due to have a medical at Boreham Wood Town and he asked me to basically, well, us, to go and find out the information. So I got in touch. I got in touch with the football club itself and they basically laughed it off and went, no. Nothing. So there you go. All right. All right. So you did some <laughs> research for some non-league football teams. <laughs> yeah. Loved well, he, just like me, he just sent me a message. He just sent me a okay. message saying, "Do you look for any teams?" And I said, "Any team around the world, mate. We just don't travel to these teams." <laughs> <laughs> I knew. I, all right. I knew. I, I knew I'd get him with the non-league. I, I knew. Hey, I'd get him. hey, hey! Summit's rubbing <laughs> off him, Steve. Bloody hell. Yeah. Changed man, Simon. Love it. Love that bit of work. If he's in the it. comments, Lewis, Lewis, if he's in the comments. All right, Lewis, yeah. you got your you got your uh your recommendation from Simon. There is no news uh for the Bournemouth player there. All right, let's get down to it. The transfer roundup. Here we go. Uh Man United Netherlands midfielder Donny van der Beek told the club that he has uh, made the wrong move and within days of joining the team and he's been offered out on loan. Um Kevin De Bruyne's was well set to this was ch- Tuesday, I think it was, was set to um reject Manchester City's offer and he said he's growing frustrated with the lack of progress. Um Steve, you got mm. a little Manchester City update for us? Yeah, um I mean just on the uh the, the Kevin De Bruyne thing, um it, it was um, the fact that he's they they're just going on as go slow. They just he's getting very, very annoyed over the fact that uh he wants to get it done, and 
latest data seems to have um, can't be bothered to get it done. Seems to want to do other things, and he's getting annoyed by it, like you said. But um, last week, uh, which we we'll start by, I mean, we mentioned Jaden Braff, if you remember last week, uh, oh. and that's uh, that, that he was in talk with Bale over occasion. Um, at Friday, uh, Fabrizio Romano confirmed it. Uh, mm -hmm. So thanks for that. Catch up, Fabrizio. You know, but uh, but what? Um, <laughs> sorry if you're watching. <laughs> but uh, we've had the story from 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 the guy who I talked to at Man City. Uh, Jaden Braff's a pain in the neck. Uh, well, his words was he's a right pain in the ass. Um, give us some context of that what, what, what's, what, a, what, what's some of the issues they may have been having with, with Jaden well, Brown well, 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 he's, he's, <laughs> well, 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 well he's a pain in the arse in the story you know he's just uh, like dressing room is a pain training is a pain he's just I don't know he just he's he, a he sounds like a Bit, bit like I don't know. We've got, we've got a bit of a story on Revel Morrison. Like it seems like he's going that way. But anyway, forgetting all that, um, oh, the guy I talked to, he was in a in a pre-match press conference, uh, and, and Breath was uh, sitting next to Pep, and uh, they, this was before the COVID, and, and they was all um, just chatting away like you do, just like you see on 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 Sky News and other news channels. Um, and what Jaden Braff's doing, he's uh, he's phoning books and pens and paper at the media while he's sitting next to Pep. Um, and I would just thought it was just, <laughs> <laughs> and you just and you could just picture it, can't you? You know. Um, and that was uh, you know who I, who I talked to about my Man City stuff, and he was actually there when he was doing a press conference. And he was just said he's 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 actually his actual words was he's a maniac, the kid's a <laughs> maniac, and and they just want to get him out. So yeah, yeah. so that's that's Jaden Braff at the minute. Um, Fernandinho's agent uh, Giovanni Branchi uh, has said that he may be leaving the club in, um, at the end of the season. Uh, he's he's on a he's on a free transfer. Um, the guy's thirty five years old. Um, but he's already he's had so many offers um, from Premier League clubs, from other, from all the European leagues, from teams in Brazil. Uh, you know what? What a player! I mean, he's 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 an, he's an incredible player, and he's one of these players who who I love. Who you just don't know is there. You know, uh, he doesn't do a lot. He don't make assists. He don't score goals. He he, he just sits in that position where it's a bit like Roberto Silva used to do. Where he's the player he just, that you don't know you got until he's gone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he just when 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 uh, when Man City attack a lot from the flanks, um, like for instance at the moment Walker and Cancelo, Fernandinho just drops in, drops in, drops in, and he's so disciplined in what we do, what he does. And um, mm. there's a lot of Man City fans, I was told, and and they think typical. They turn around and say, "Well, I don't know. He don't do nothing." Yes, you know? but, but this is the same. Exactly what they said. Exactly what they used to say about Gilbert. But see, what does he do? He it's don't exactly do what a lot of people used to say about um, Jordan Henderson. A lot of people used to say about many of these players because mm. they're not got bells and whistles when they're playing. They just do their job. Mm. He don't. They don't uh, do nothing. And you say he doesn't score goals. He don't. He don't do assists. All he does is put his foot in. As a tackle, lays it off to people who to go and do, who, who can do the assist and, and can score the goals. He just, and then all he does once he's done that, he just goes back. And it's all about discipline. You need these players in your team. Yeah. Every every top team needs a Fernandinho. Mm -hmm. uh, but just just on from that, um, just before we come on tonight, uh, the last thing on Man City, uh, um, the summer the summer things it, it's it's like a Kane and Harland fight. Um, so they're the, the two. That they're, the main they're, they're, the two. they're the two. They're the two. Kane, they are saying it's cost hundred million. I, I just can't see it. Harland's on about sixty-five million, uh, but that's that's, that's a, because he's like a buy on a buyout clause. Uh, City have already got like a sell-on clause for Sancho, um, which is like fifteen percent. Uh, mm. So they they get about what's that? 
if you, if, you, if you're working it out from what he was at Man City, what uh, sorry, at what Man United were gonna wanted to pay for him, you're looking at about another 18 million off of uh, Haaland. So, you know, you're taking it, you know, down to what's that, 47 uh, around about that. Is it my maths is terrible? 47 million pound. Uh, so, where'd you go? Do you go Kane? Do you go mm. Haaland? Kane, Premier League proven. And he proves he can oh, do everything it's else. It's a lot of money, though, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, but it's good that's, investment, that's, though. That's right. Because but, Kate, cause, cause he's going to... Because now, when we, his, his price tag's gone up again, isn't it? Kane. Yeah, do you know what? No, do, do you know what? I, I, I don't feel like Kane's price tag ever changes. I feel <laughs> like... I feel like it's more the case... Are people willing to pay for Kane? Now, previously, it was always a yes. But then for me, it was getting to a stage where it's like, is it getting to the point where people will be looking elsewhere because Kane is always going to be that price tag because it's leaving. Now Kane is kind of getting into the point where it's like, is it is it really, is it, it's a serious time for Kane to move? And it's his it last is. opportunity. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree with Simon. And, comes into uh, his prime, doesn't he now? Comes into yeah, his prime next year. Now... Now, I think clubs will pay that money for Kane because he's worth it. It's just, who? Who's left? United, City. Mm. Kane who's will never go abroad. That's what, that's what I, I, from what, from what I've from what been, been told by people, Kane is not this type of player who will go abroad. I think so I'm it's Man United out. and Man City then? Well, yeah. They're the only two clubs then? Because yeah. it's not Chelsea. Chelsea ain't going to buy Kane. Hmm. Or are they? No, because nah, Chelsea, Chelsea Werner, want Ireland. Like, well, I don't know. He won't go to Chelsea. Chelsea. Want, um, Chelsea want Ireland, don't they, from Bruce Dortmund. That's all they're yeah. after it's summer. Who would you take, um, Jerome? Because I know, <laughs> you know what I'm asking you, didn't you? Yeah, I'll take Because <laughs> I know, I'll I know, I know I'll you. Take, I'll take Haaland over Kane all day long. Hmm. He is a better player to he's, me. I just think Kane Premier League proven straight away. I mean, there's not really, a, there's not really a wrong answer there, but yeah. I can see why you would pick either or. Uh, why you would pick Kane Premier League proven? You know, with Kane, you stick Kane in Man City or Man United, he's just getting thirty to thirty-five goals. A season. Has Kane got has, has Kane got more to his game than Haaland? Yes. Yes. I don't know. I think it's the other I way around. No, I, I don't yeah. know. Uh, it's a question. I don't know. Not, I, don't know. I, I, I don't know. Um, I think Kane I, is. Um, I, I think Kane has got more to his game than people give him credit for. Um, as you've seen now, he's <laughs> defending and he's whipping 40, 50 yard balls, diags onto mm. people's feet as they're running. Like, he's got more than I think people say. Um, I just think. His best game is when he keeps it concentrated in that one position up mm. top, not trying to drop too deep, not tr where he drifts in from the left sometimes and whips in shots, gets goals from his head. That's his best position, not mm. dropping in too deep because he wants more of the ball and stuff like that. I think, whereas Haaland, he's got, Haaland's, I think he's faster than, than Harry Kane. Um, oh yeah, it's quicker, and he's probably got. He's he may have a higher oh, yeah. bar, but you don't know. You you, you don't know. It's, it's still yeah. young. Um, he's twenty years old. If City, if City yeah. don't buy, if City don't buy Harland this summer, then they won't ever get him. I don't think that's that's my because he go that, round my the season. And first, my I mean, <clears throat> I agree with Jerome. I'd I'd take Harland. I mean, be, mm -hmm. because just for the fact that. The price is, <laughs> or more than half. Yeah, um, and I believe I believe when Kane was Harland's age, Kane wasn't as good as Ireland. No, he wasn't, no nowhere, no Kane was no, no, the late at, at that age. Exactly. Like, so, it, how good is Ireland going to get? They're talking about yeah. being the next Lewandowski. Yeah, the bar's higher. No. The bar for 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 Harland's probably higher. So, who, who did you say, Sai? I choose Kane because I've watched Ireland yeah. and his, his link-up yeah. <laughs> with his link-up link play and he don't do many assists and he doesn't hold the ball mm. up very good. He's just, he's like an Aubameyang. 
If he's there in front of the goal and he's got a working team behind him, he'll score you 35, 40 goals easy. Kane, if Kevin De Bruyne goes out injured, he will then go still be the striker, but he'll also come back and he'll do what he's done with Son mm. at Tottenham. And you think you take Son away and you put Sterling there or you put Mares there next to Kane. I just think with Kane, mm. it's written for him to go to City and that's when Alan Shearer should be worried about his record. I've, I've, just, um, I've been told it's oh. somewhere it's one or the other. Sorry, uh, just, go on, just, so, just so everyone's aware, Haaland's 20 years old. He's played 25 Bundesliga games and he scored 25 goals. And I don't think he really <laughs> takes penalties. <laughs> no, he doesn't. It is crazy. It is he's a fantastic goal scorer. He is the next Lewandowski. He is going to be. What, do you, yeah. what did you say, Kiz? Um, I, I I don't know, man. That's a that's a proper tough one. <laughs> it's well hard. It's well hard because, like, it, look, Man City. If Man City want to win the Premier League in the next for the next three years, like guaranteed, I'll you're I'll probably going to go and buy Harry Kane. If you're looking to buy a striker in, and potentially you might take a little time to settle, and then, but for the future you're looking to do that. Then you may be going for Haaland. It's a tough one. I don't know, yeah. mate. I don't know. Like it's a good edict. I, I don't think I've watched enough of Haaland to say, like that he's Harry Kane's level now. And what I think Man City need right now is they're going from a Sergio Aguero. Maybe they they need a Harry Kane. I don't know. Uh, like we said, they they just they just beat United in their own at their own at their own stadium without a striker. Like they're they're incredible, see. So it don't really yeah. matter which one they get because to be honest, they don't even need a striker. <laughs> they're, so, yeah. they're so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, I need to move on. I need to move on. I need to move on. We spent twenty minutes on Man City there. Bloody hell! Uh, Child complete the sign of Liverpool twenty twenty three forward Liam Liam Miller on loan for the rest of the season. Uh, Real Madrid forward called short his loan with uh, uh, Kubo called short his loan with Villarreal to go on loan to Getafe. William Saliba joined League One side Nice on loan for the rest of the season. Got man the match in his uh, second game yesterday. Um, uh, mm. That's like strange, Indian. isn't it? I don't get it. Do you know, what, what do they? What can he do there that he can't do here? Um, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really in the Bresco. It's got to be something. There's got to be something. It, it can't mm. just be that he's not good enough. Um, no. Arsenal striker Hedy and Kelly yeah, held talks with um, Wolves earlier on. Arsenal were looking for 20, 15 to 20 million for the player. Um, nothing more on that. Um, believe Brighton might be interested in him as well. Um, Bayern Munich are in talks to sign Reading and England fullback Omar Richards at the end of the season. Jerome, what's, what's he saying? Getting interest from Bayern Munich. Oh, yeah. I, you know what? I can see why. Yeah? <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> so he's, um, yeah, tw- 22 years old. He, he predominantly plays as a left back rather than like a left wing back, but he can play there. Um, he made his debut in 2017 for Reading and he's he has played for the England under-21 under teams. Now, his key strength, a bit like Wan Bissaka, is his tackling. Mm-hmm. I think out of the, in the whole of the English sort of football league, whoever does the stats, only Wan Bissaka has got like a bet, better tackle success rate than this Omar Richards. Um, really? not, not, but not only is he superb defensively, but on on the ball, although Wan Bissaka is a Premier League player and he's playing for Reading, he seems like a lot more comfortable, like really smooth technique, and. Um, when you look at him, you can definitely picture him playing at, at a higher level. Um, yeah, he, you, it's very rare you see some uh, winger sort of take him on and get past him. Um, but on the on the ball as well, he, he seems very good. Decent player. Yeah, I like the look of him, yeah. Yeah, it's probably why Bayern Munich are interested. Um, Steve, you had a bit of in- information about uh, Ed and Hazard. Yeah, a little bit. Um, Ed and Hazard is, is just not, not um, doing it. At Real Madrid, and he's not, he's not Madrid, a happy boy. He's not happy boy, and the Real Madrid fans ain't happy. They've got the white handkerchiefs out. They're giving it the old this a uh, bit too much. So uh, I think I'm going to have to word with our friend Joan to see what's going on uh, to get a little bit more insight. Um, 
But this season, uh, just scored three goals, had seven assists in 30 games. Uh, it's just, just not good enough. Uh, I mean, Real Madrid thought that Eden Hazard was going to come in and replace Christian Ronaldo. Now, to us, we're like, OK, Hazard's good, but he ain't that good. But Hazard... And, uh, bloody hell, Hazard. <laughs> but Hazard <laughs> is not um, uh, and has never been a 30 to 40 goal a season forward player. He's, yeah, uh, but, he's, he's not that player. Yeah, but that's just that's just what the real Madrid fans. When when he went, he come in, so they're mm. just thinking that he's going to come in, and because he plays in sort of like he plays in exactly the same position as what Ronaldo does, yeah. and they've put him in that exact same position, mm. and he's just not, and they're expecting him to do the quality of what they they used to see him for God knows how many years, and he's not doing yeah. it, and the crowd every time he's playing, the white handkerchiefs are out, uh, his his stats ain't great. Um, Juventus could be interested in a swap, and and then that that could take uh, Ronaldo back um, to Real Madrid, and uh, Hazard to um, to Juventus. Um, because at the moment there's 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 a lot of things happening to Juventus, and and one thing is that they want to bring players in, but it's uh, it's it's going to be all about swaps and um, players that are cheap, and, and not like in the past where you know, they've, they've paid like 400 grand a week for a player and paid £70 million pound for them to come. It's a to- total different change of uh, um, way of doing things at the moment of Juventus. For the, for the, for the foreseeable future, though, as I say, it's, it's just swap deals. It's just going to be loan players and it's just going to be... Because they bring no your buy players in, it's going to be, yeah. And it's going to be could cheap. You see, and when, could you see Hazard wanting to go to Juventus? Yeah, I, I, mm. I, 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 think, I think I think I think it'd be hard in Spain. But this, this is what I'm saying. Can you see Hazard as a player? What he was like at Chelsea, wanted to go to Juventus. Like not no. even not Juventus is interested in Hazard. Not you want not the deal not happening. Could you mm. see? If, even if Real Madrid wanted to swap, could you see the player himself wanting to play in Italy? No, no, no. But I, it does make, I, can, I, I can see Juventus doing the swap. I can see, the swap. I can, yeah, I can see that 100 percent because they're getting a younger mm. model as well. Like, I'm exactly. not being funny. There's a lot of the, like <laughs> this 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 swap deal is massively beneficial, mostly to Juventus because they one they want to get. His wages off that bill anyway. It's a lot of money, yeah? He's coming towards mm. the end of his career. Although he's still a machine, he's still coming towards the end of it, yeah? Mm. And you're getting... You're getting... Edson Hazard is quite, is, is, is quite a, bit, a bit younger. So, it's it, it, it would play... And they're going to play it off as, oh, you can get Cristiano Ronaldo back. But it's like, yeah, but how long have you got him back for? But for yeah. me, would personally... Does he even want to go back? Yeah, would- well, I don't know. It's Cristiano Ronaldo. He loves that because kind of. The thing is, at the moment, he's getting. He doesn't like the way he's being treated. He's getting pulled off like after sixty minutes because the the, the when the crowd are getting built, um, on top of him, he's he's like uh, he, he he's just non-existent in games. So I, f- I think Real Madrid would seriously look at it just mm-hmm. to get him, just to get yeah. him. You know, because he's not he's not doing it. I mean, I've just felt fault with something in me. I don't know if you need to use for your fault in it. I know where he'd look lovely on the left. <laughs> but uh, I don't think that would ever happen, would it? Who, uh, well, who knows? This is the transfer market. But <laughs> I, I, I could see Real Madrid want to do a deal. I could see Juventus doing a deal. I personally just can't see Hazard because it's a discipline thing for me. And ha- Hazard is a, he's a, he's a, he's like a, what's the word I'm looking for? He's that maverick player. He's that free spirit. He's he's got a bit of club that's going to give him a little bit of leeway, and I just can't see that at, at Juventus. Mm. Um, they're very organised, very rigid, um, mm. or one of the least rigid uh, in that league. But it's it's it's, it's, it's Juventus. Mm. I, I, I I don't see Hazard himself <laughs> going to go. Um, but we. I mean, I know. I, we don't know. I know. Jerome said the other week. He asked Jerome asked um, Nathan, and he said like uh, uh, important the stats and. You know, I think we all think that stats, you know, are a bit deceiving sometimes. You know, when when you know for players, but 
Mm. Regarding this, uh, when you look at Real Madrid and you, you hear those stats, you think, no, they, they ain't going to accept that. You know, yeah. Real Madrid yeah. is a different place altogether. Exactly. And and the thing is, with Real Madrid as well, you, 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 you'll watch Real Madrid and you'll see players that you like and you think to yourself, oh, they're quality. And then about two, three months down the line, it's like Real Madrid's not happy with him because he's had a run of three or four games he's not played well. Mm. and Because at Real Madrid, you, you've got to be the best. You're it's the Galacticos. Mm. It's, they expect high standards and you, you get one game, one bad game, and then you better have three good games after that. Like, they don't expect second best. Mm-hmm. Um... You got a little update on Man United, Steve? Uh, yeah, uh, Man United. Um, first, first thing we um, is there's, there's some news come out about Dayo Apicano, um today or late, late last night. Actually, it was uh, like Leipzig's uh, CEO uh, Oliver uh, Mislav has said that uh, we are now willing to listen to offers um, from Man United, Liverpool for Dayo Apicano. Um, so they're uh, now that now, now he's um, now they're looking to get rid. The the, the same goes for Marcel Sabitzer, who who has been you know linked with Spurs and uh-huh. recently asked recently Arsenal. Um, I've been told the player will will leave, um, whether that's in January or June. Uh, it's just again we talk. I keep I, mean, I keep mentioning this word remit. And this this seems to be Leipzig's remit. It's like when when you think of players like Werner, uh, Matthias Kuna, Debbie K, uh, Diego, uh, Demi, they've they they they're very easy to sell their players. Leipzig they don't very yeah. easy to sell. They don't they, they easy get. You could easily see uh, Ufmakano and Sabitzer leaving in January, and it, I I don't think it would be a surprise. I mean, no. that's... Sadly, for, sad for the fans. Like Leipzig is what, what Leipzig is. Leipzig is a business. They Leipzig bought into is that. a business. The, the, yeah. the fact, the, you don't feel sorry for the fans because they bought into that. The, the fans, have, look, the fans know when you're supporting RB Leipzig, that's what you're getting. You're getting the players that are brought in at a yeah. cheap cost. They're built up and they're sold on. Mm. Marcel yeah. Spitz is 26 now or 27. He's getting into the point where it's probably mm. he, he, they probably wanted to probably sell him a couple of seasons ago. It was last season. Yeah, like it's getting to that point now. They have to sell him because otherwise his valuation mm. is only going to go down now. Because of his age, yeah. but it, the, but um, they're, they're more interested in their bank account. I mean, they're very. If you ever look in uh, on, in certain places, you'll find that you know, you know, on certain articles, you'll you'll be hearing now, you know, they seem to be proud that they sell players and that they've yeah. got the bank account. They're very, you know, they're very sort of more interested in their figures and what's in their bank accounts and who they sell and what they sell them for and whether they've made a profit and. It, you know, I think there was one list I see, and, and they seem proud of, of the, you, you know, of what they do. But they're being um, pretty they're working, like, though. They've, 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 they've surpassed some of the some, some of the biggest names in German football now, and they and they 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 are now the uh, one of the big names. They're, they've taken names that used to we used to talk about names like Schalke and 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 on all these names, uh, uh, but and Leverkusen. They're they, well, Leverkusen are doing really well this season, but. But RB Leipzig were above them uh, for for however many years, and and mm. only only just behind by by Munich and, and Borussia Dortmund, and at one point in the last few years, were pushing them for the league. So um, they, they, mm. they, they, they've got a blueprint. They've started from nothing. What is not even twenty years ago, and and now they're in the top league doing doing bits and selling selling their players, and still manages to bring in the next batch of players and, and, and stay at the top or stay in and around the top, um, whether they ever win the league or not. Yeah. Who knows with, with the way that they're doing this model? A very well, it's going to be a long time. It's going to take a lot to get to knock yeah, Bayern yeah. Munich off their perch. But um, yeah, and um, Manchester United, they, they, what they've done, they, they had. Um, I was told in the week um, by a Man United man that uh, Man United have always been very, very interested in Camavinga. They've, they've been on him for a good couple of years now, mm-hmm. um, but now they've ended it. They've ended their interest in him. Um, so, Camavinga will not be going to Manchester United. That has been finished. And uh, we actually got that from the actual recruitment people at Manchester United. Uh-huh. So, yeah. that that has been put into... 
whether that's anything to do with Diallo and whether that's anything to do with the the fantastic players that are coming through up under the twenty threes, I don't know. But it's it it it's uh it it it's ended. Uh, Man uh, United want Williams out. We mentioned like sorry, sorry did you want to talk about Cam Vingas? No, no, I was just I was just about to say, um I'm I'm sure a big part of that is probably down to the fact that uh, Real Madrid have made him like one of their number one targets this summer as well, and, and yeah, I think, I think that, that's the, the word's got about that there is something maybe a struck or something that's really in advance. Yeah, you've just reminded me when you when you mentioned those words, they they actually the word said to me was that the recruitment team feel like that the deal's done. It's all done. The deal's done and dusted with someone mm-hmm. else. Yeah, so then they 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 pulled away. So, yeah. Uh, last week we mentioned that uh, they want uh, Williams out um, and that he wanted to go to um, Southampton. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mention he wanted Williams out. I said that uh, he was leaving or with Southampton, Newcastle. Newcastle. Yeah, Found yeah. out in a, in, that he's got an awful attitude. It's terrible. And they, they that's why they got get rid of him. He thinks he's big time. one of them ones. He thinks he's Billy Big Bollocks, yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> I don't know what's going on with, with youngsters. I mean, you've got Jaden Breath doing what he's doing, Williams doing what he's doing. Do you know um, what it is? When, when yeah. some, some, some players, yeah, some players, and this is not just the way. Some players, once they get told they are good and they realise they are the one of the better ones in their age group, sometimes it goes to their head. And mm. when they start training with the first or the big olders, and they are still at a good level, it it perpetuates it, it continues and makes it even worse. Mm. And, th- and if there's, there's people around him that are not telling him to wind his neck in or keep his feet on the ground, then he's only going to, that, that overinflated ego of his is only mm. going to grow. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another, n- just a couple more things. Andrew Pierre has been on the phone to Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. He's begging to come back. Uh, and Oli don't want to back. Go. Yeah. Um, someone asked me to look at Max Aaron's, so I had I'd a word me guy. Uh, Manchester United have been looking at um, Max Aaron's. There's been talks with Max Aaron's um, that they don't feel that the transfer is going to go through because it's um, the words that, I, that was given to me was that it's too hard and awkward a transfer to complete. So whether that whether he's asking the same. Things that he was like, he was to to buy 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 <laughs> yeah, to be a I, I, team starter. Yeah, he wants. Yeah, he bit, yeah. I've, I've had some information on that as well. So I'll let you carry on if you want, Steve, or just yeah, go on, say yeah. what I've said. Yeah, I, I, basically, I, I much more, mate. Go yeah, on. basically, with Max Aaron's, Man United, yes, I've held three meetings with him. They've had a Zoom chat with him as well. But his demands are basically that he wants first team football. And he doesn't like the competition of Aaron Wambasaka. <laughs> He's got big <laughs> demands. He's got big demands. And this also backs no, yes. it up because he no, said yes. to he said to Bayern Munich he wants to be ahead of Alfonso David. He don't want to be sat there on the bench. Sorry, do you know yeah. Alfonso David? It's, 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 it's Pavard, isn't it? It's Pavard on the right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It, they it's, they they wanna they want someone to give Wambasaka competition. Yeah, and, and no, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Want, same, it's the same with Bayern yeah. Munich. They want someone to give Pavard competition, but yeah. not take his spot or sell him. Like, yeah, we're playing at Norwich, man, and this is Bayern yeah. Munich. Man. I, I, I respect that you you rate yourself, but um, yeah, mm. I mean, it's a big jump. And and the thing is, yeah, for everything, for a lot of like hype that um, Max Aaron's had and he's a very good player very good attributes as a, as a right back Norwich went down and he conceded a lot of goals from that side I saw Max Aaron's bombing forward in games when he should never have been bombing forward when the left back's mm. already up there he's bombing forward and they get caught like and mm. yes it, it, the instructions are going to be coming from the manager but you as a defender that that's part of that's got to be your own decision making as well so mm. like uh, there's, 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 oh, yeah Good player, very good player, Max Aaron's, but um, he's still got a lot yeah. to learn um, in his yeah. position. Last, 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 last thing. Uh, what oh, I nearly said, who told me? <laughs> um, ben de Beek, you're going to see a lot more of him um, from now 
through January to summer. You're going to see a lot more of him on the pitch. Um, they they will be moving him on. The, they they will be moving him on. Um, what's wow. what's happening? Is they're going to play him? Um, and what 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 they're going to do? The reason why they've got to play him? They've, they've got to try now to get the obviously the money back that um, what, what they paid for him in the first place. So obviously, if um, he's going to be sitting on the bench up until the summer, say, um, or he's, he's going to play the game or even now, um, they're going to get less and less money. Um, mm. So you'll see more of him. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and we, we mentioned it, we, that he'd been offered to all these different clubs. Has he been uh, offered to Arsenal? Because uh, Arsenal. It was actually, yeah, but it, actually, I've, I've, I was told that. Um, that this this was his agent. He was just going around, just trying to get come get out, ah. let's get out. So that that was more. Last week I said it was Man United offering him out to Man U, to, but you know, uh, but this, there's another story now that it was actually his agent who was going around to all the clubs yeah, wanting sense. to push him out. That yeah. Sense. So uh, yeah, I'd love to have and him. That, all yeah, right, and, that, and, and, and that's it. You know who his girlfriend is. I'll get on the blow to Dennis Burke, to Dennis Burke uh, I'll get on the old phone. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it in the family. I'll um, get on Tur- the phone to Dennis. <laughs> yeah. Turkish, Turkish reports claim that QPR midfielder Bright Osei Samuel has agreed terms to sign for Fenerbahce. Uh, Jerome, what kind of a player is this guy? Yeah. Um, yeah, the QPR 23. He... Um, what kind of player is he? Lots of ability, turns uh-huh. defenders inside out, yeah. um, and he, he can look look unplayable at times. The way he the way he runs, he can sometimes be a bit gangly, like maybe a, a smaller version of you know. Remember like Paolo One Shot, the way he used to run. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Derby County, weren't he? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Was, it, was, yeah. it, was it him who scored that goal against what's his name? Drake? Man United. United. Yes. Yeah, he ran the link for the pitch. That's yeah. When he announced Shot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry, mate. He's, um, yeah, so he's he's he is, I guess, a winger. His, his starting position is normally out wide, and I wouldn't say he's got blistering pace, but once he gets going, he he really does sort of go up through the gears quite well. And yeah. sort of, I guess, the comparison is um, a little bit to like Eze, who's who's joined who's joined Palace, yeah, yeah. Yeah. because he's a creative player for QPR. But in terms of style of play, I'd, I don't think they're they're alike at all. But um, yeah, he can he can like produce bits of magic at times. This this guy, yeah. think they like him in uh, Turkey. Oh yeah, it'll, it'll light it'll light up Istanbul for sure. <laughs> very good, very good, very good. <laughs> uh, Leeds are our, our favourites to sign the uh, defender <laughs> Keo Tamori on on loan this month. Um, West Bromwich yeah. Albion are interested in signing Bournemouth striker Josh King. Uh, mm. Was it Özil? Uh, was in Turkey earlier on this week for discussions with Fenerbahce. Um, he did actually he? put out. He did actually put out a picture <laughs> that said throwback, um, but that wasn't actually a throwback. It was probably he was just it was just <laughs> him being mischievous um, and probably just trying couldn't to help. He was he was he was, he was hitting. hypnotizing this. And it, it was all he the... couldn't he couldn't he couldn't just not put out a post. He had to put out. Uh, uh, a little coded post which was like yeah. throwback and the messages that came out like love to be back here and then you found out that he was actually in there um, you, can, you can just so, imagine yeah. him can't you on the end of that screen laughing he's absolute nuts off can't yeah, you yeah because that's, that. that's what he is um, uh, with regards to Ozil um, yes it looks like um, Arsenal are trying to do or Fenerbahce are trying to do a loan to the end of the season um, since then, there's been talks of uh, the mutual termination of contract uh, with Ozil willing to uh, let Arsenal pay the remainder of his contract over um, the years of the contract with Fenerbahce. Um, with that, I know there was a lot of people saying, what's the point? Why would you do that? But that makes sense because people were saying that that's only to benefit Ozil, but it's not because benefit Arsenal. If, if if Ozil stays till the end of the season, Arsenal have to pay him a £6 million loyalty bonus. By Ozil going to Fenerbahce, they won't have to pay that loyalty bonus. That's 
Um, if, if he goes to Fenerbahce, Arsenal would have to pay the remainder of his contract, which is of what the 350 grand a week, whatever it is, um, over the, over the, no, it wouldn't be over six months. They would be paying that out over the three years, um, of his contract at mm -hmm. Fenerbahce. Um, it is very, very likely that for, for Ozil will, will be going to Fenerbahce. We're, we, we, it's, it's right at the very advanced stages of this deal. Um, as soon as we get any more information, we'll let you know. It's very much looking like Ozil is, 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 is gone. Um, it looks like for me, for me, is, for me though, I think it's, it's definitely going for me because the, yeah. the stuff is done on on social media. All you've got yeah. to do is join the dots. Yeah. He's put a picture on his Instagram and his social media about um, with his wife and kids and having uh, Turkish tea. His brother has put a picture on his Instagram of the uh, Fenerbahce um, badge with the hourglass and some eyes emoji. His sister has put pitch uh, has put a location of a restaurant that's their favorite family restaurant that's near the state not near the stadium but in Fenerbahce and basically it's just been leaking so many information this is so, he loves to drop he loves to drop hints he loves to drop little stuff um, yeah yeah information coming up from for us is it's 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 nearly done it's very close um I'd be surprised if he's not a fan of by the end of January, put it that way. I would be very yeah. surprised. Um, so as soon as we get any more information on that, we'll let you know. Uh, Mikel Arteta has uh, backtracked and he's interested in Isco after the emergence of Emil Smith-Rowe. Uh, Julian Wijnaldum has refused to sign a new deal at Liverpool when his current contract ends in, in the summer. Um, Arsenal are linked to Israeli football footballer Mana Solomon. Now, we asked Jerome... To go and find the next UC Benny Union, yeah, yeah. Jerome <laughs> came back to us about two uh, weeks later, yeah, when we said, Have you found the next UC Benny Union? He said, I tell you what, someone's actually recommended the player to me. It's this no. player. Six months down the line, yeah, Arsenal are linked to this player that Jerome was told is the next UC Benny Union. Jerome. Manor Solomon, what's he got about? Him? What's his name? <laughs> the the twenty, he's twenty one years old. He's a winger. He's a he's a full Israeli international. Now he he currently plays for Shakhtar Donetsk in the Ukraine, and he was playing in the Israeli league. Um, and the Israeli league isn't the standard. Isn't isn't fantastic. Even I'm I'm out I'm out on Israel at the moment, and the. The people that watch Israeli football, they say like the standards, it's shocking, it's horrific, it's, it's terrible. And they always, people out here are always watching your Barcelonas and your Madrids, they're like the favourite teams here. Mm -hmm. um, but um, anyway, going back to Man Manuel Solomon. So he, he joined Shakhtar Donetsk in 2019 from a team called uh, Maccabi Peta Tikva. It's about 30 minutes from where I am at the moment for £5 million, which for is for Israeli teams is like a ridiculous amount of money. Um he's absolutely tiny, he's about five foot five. Um but what what he did at what he did in Israel is what happens to every Israeli um every Israeli basically when they turn a certain age they have to serve in the army. It's called the Israeli Defence Force, the IDF. So oh, yeah. he did actually serve he actually uh, while he was playing football for Petar Tikva he served in the IDF. He wasn't sort of um you know, on the front line, but he was like, he was given like light duties. Um, anyway, he joined Shakhtar and he hasn't scored a lot of goals, but he scored sort of in very big games. He, last season, he scored at the Etihad against Man City. He scored at Atalanta. And this season, he scored in both of the games against Real Madrid at home and away. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, he is over a short distance. He is absolute lightning. Um, he, he can beat, I'd say, the first sort of over the first two or th first sort of, I guess, two or three yards, he just flies past people, and then maybe for the next 20, 20 meters after that, like he's on, you can't, you can't stop him. Yeah. Um, excellent control at like dribbling at high speed, um, beats players in very, very tight spaces, and um, delivery, delivery as well is pretty good in terms of from corners or crosses. and for an Israeli player to have this 
this sort of level of technical ability it's it's really rare it, it doesn't happen a lot he's mm. i'd i'd say maybe a a bit like aaron lennon perhaps yeah. i think his overall game is a bit better I think yeah. lennon was just down the wing down the wing whereas this guy com comes inside a lot more um with um, the oh, it, it's funny what arsenal are going to do because if because there seems to be a a few different players on the right now, especially with Saka sort of you know, really yeah. playing well there. Um, yeah. And I, I think it's probably the only position he would really play in is, is on the right wing. So I don't know, but a crack, cracking player. Yeah. yeah. Really player. He looks, he looks uh, a very, very, he looks just one of them dangerous, busy players. Um, yeah. And I think his transfer value is pretty low as well. Um, is so. he is he similar to uh, you say? Was he like? Is he a winger? Is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Is he? Is, would you say like the height and how he's quick, nippy, runs incredible pace? Yeah, yeah. I know it's a different. I know it's a different side of the pitch, but is he is he a bit similar to um, Mark Overmars, something like that? Um, I'd say I'd say he adds a bit more. He's got like. Um, I, I, I think he's yeah, more, he looks more flashy. Yeah. yeah, I think Overmars mm. was like knock it and run, wasn't he? Um, this guy, I think, <laughs> keeps the ball closer to his feet than Overmars. Um, yeah. like Overmars was, at, his, at his time at Arsenal, he was like world class, wasn't he? Oh, on that it's unbelievable. He was probably mm. one of the best in the world in his position, whereas, yeah. you know, yeah, this guy's very young. And, uh, yeah, he don't, he, don't, he don't get brought up a lot, does he, old Marky? You know, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. Um, but I mean, if you speak to any Barcelona fans, they they tell you the same that he was that signing from Arsenal was was their, the spark for them, um, mm. was the the start of the the uh, what what Barcelona is now again or mm. the rebirth. Um, last week, uh, Jerome, you got asked to look at a couple of players. Um, I know that one of the guys is actually in the comment section asking about it again, um, Michael yeah. Alisi. Um, oh. And you, uh, a couple of other people that uh, have yeah. asked you to do uh, a couple of recommendations. What's he saying, yeah. uh, Mark Alisi again? Oh, Mark Alisi, what what a great player he looks! Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> excited, yeah. Thank, thanks for bringing him up. Um, so he's a 19 year old attacking midfielder or sort of a winger, um, but he he seems to take up a lot of positions all over the pitch. Um, another one of these players that he spent his youth career at Man City and Chelsea. Um, and made his debut for Reading um, in 2019. And from what, I, from what I understand, he's now pretty much a regular in the team. Um, he's been capped by the French, by French, by the sorry, by the French youth uh, youth team, the under 18s. Um, and he has actually been linked recently with uh, a few Premier League teams because his, his contract expires um, in 2022. He's been linked with Palace, Leeds, and Villa. Mm -hmm. um, Left-footed player, very very silky. Um, like to sort of jink inside on his left foot, but um, for sort of an attacking player, he, he seems to track back and puts a lot of tackles in. Um, when he dribbles at speed with a ball, his technique is very similar to Leroy Sane, like very nice on the way, long strides. Um, but not only does he sort of run a lot with the ball, he, he can pick up the ball and just sort of spray it 50, 60 yards from like deep areas. Mm -hmm. um, seems like, yeah, I'm really really glad we got asked to look at him because he seems he seems quality and wouldn't surprise me if a, a Premier League team does pick him up pretty soon. Um, yeah. yeah really few, impressed. His, his name popped up quite a few times in the transfer market uh, in the summer. So I think it'll be happen again. Um, you'll probably hear the same again. Um, who yeah. were the other ones that you uh, they asked you to look for? So the other one, so Jonathan Cox um, asked us to look at a guy in Greece called Christos Solis. Mm -hmm. He plays for a team called PAOK Salonika, and that's a team that Arsenal fans might remember because years ago, um, <laughs> mid nineties, Arsenal got drawn against them in the uh, Euro Euro uh, the European Cup. Uh -huh. um, so he, he's been with PAOK Salonika since twenty since twenty ten, but only made his debut last season. Um, he so far this season he's got quite a good goal scoring record as as a forward. He's, he scored eight in twenty one in all competitions, which for an eighteen year old isn't that bad um and and he has already played for the full greek national team now you are only very recently i think last week uefa put a list together of the top 50 footballers to watch out for in 2021 mm -hmm. and christos solis was on the list oh, um, to show that 
people rating. Very, yeah. very lively, super energetic. He's he's not a fancy player, but he seems very direct and effective in his work and very like alert to danger in, the, in and around the penalty box. And some of his finishes for his club are awesome. Um, and um, not only that, but when he does get into space on the wings, he's got the speed to sort of, you know, really take on and roast the fullbacks. Just very, very direct. Not, you know, nothing fancy at all, but um, yeah. Definitely Decent character player. watch then. Chris Tost Solis, yeah. Nice Thank player. you very much for that, Jonathan. He did actually jump in with a reminder there. Boom. Thank you very much there. And yeah, if anyone else has got any um, players to for, John, uh, for Jerome to check out, he loves doing it. So uh, just drop it in the comment section and we'll we're, 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 um, give a little profile, profile next week. Nice. Uh, how are you doing, boys? You good? Boom, boom, boom. Make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the um, the share button as well. Tell all your friends to come and join us, all right? It's the best transfer show about. It's the only one I know, actually. But, yeah, that means it's the best. All right, Arsenal, go Arsenal third goalkeeper, Matt Macy, completed his uh, medical at uh, Scottish side Hibernian, and he has completed his move there uh, as well. Uh, that was earlier on the good week. Good luck, Matt. Good, good luck, Matt. It's been a long time. Uh, I, mean, I think he just needs to play. He needs to, he needs to make that move now. Do you know what I mean? He, mm. he can't just be yeah. third goalkeeper in your whole career. Uh, Patterson Dacker wants to move to the Premier League and is being looked at by Manchester City and Manchester United. Oh, and Liverpool, supposedly. Um, Brazilian forward uh, Claudinho will make his move to RB Leipzig from sister club Red Bull Bracateno. Um Good player, Jerome. Got another sister club. Another, another sister, sister club. club. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I reckon. So this, this, yeah, this Claudinho, he, um, yeah, part of like the Red Bull gang, I suppose. He, his youth career was at. Santos and Corinthians, he's 23. If I was to tell you, if I was to tell you guys and everyone watching, this is probably the flashiest, most showboating <laughs> player I think we've ever we've ever seen. No um, way, I need to go and watch him. Uh, yeah. yeah. Lot, lots of ability, but I think he's going to make himself a bit of a target for defenders. Um, he's good, he's a good player, but he's just... You know, sometimes people do tricks for the sake of it rather than because it's like what the game wants them to do this guy's he's so flash yeah. Yeah. it's flashier than Ronaldo when he first came I, I, to I love a flashy it. player I love a flashy <laughs> player he's been to, what position is he sort of a winger oh, no. right. that's, that's yeah, I like a fla I like a flashy player but if we're nil nil and we need a goal I don't want to see flashy stuff I want to see <laughs> that I want to see that when we're three or four up and he's yeah, entertaining I, us I, I think what it is is some, I like a player that can do something out of nothing um, just, 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 just quick, just, just, you see that back heel that Danny Van Der Veek big didn't he? He's already done that back heel through uh, <sighs> against Watford. No, I missed anyway, it. Anyway, I, di I digress. But, <laughs> I digress. Was that the highlight of the game? Because after, after the fifth Pretty minute much. goal, <laughs> much, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jerome, the comment section's just gone absolutely mad for recommendations of players now. Since then, oh, yeah. since oh, then cool. that tells Magno. Um, he's a top. Oh, we know player. about him. We, we know, know about, about him. him. He's, he's mustard. Liverpool, oh. Liverpool linked with him. Oh, Brazil, Brazilian, um, wasn't he? Brazilian player. It was only the other day there was a link for Arsenal, but I did a paragraph on him. I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, in, in Charles uh, Magno was one of the one of, one of the best players in the under 18s um, World Cup last year uh, in Brazil. He was, he's a, he's a deep, very good player. Um, uh, Omar Retic, uh, go and have a look at. Um, uh, the Arsenal next gen football next generation. Uh, oh, uh, Jerome did a little bit about Omar Retic in uh, part two of that, so go and check that out. Um, Very Patterson, good centre back. Sorry, Pat, I'm doing some live transfer news here. Uh, yes, Patterson yes, Dakar is is being linked with West Ham, um, but uh, Roshan uh, didn't mention anything about Patterson Dakar. So, um, I'll, John, uh, John, I'll Jonathan, Jonathan, you're 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 right. There, there has been rumours and links that Pats and Danger, Dang, Danger, who's Danger, uh, Decker is uh, yeah. been rumoured to go to West Ham. But mm, how true they are, I don't. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we just had Roshan on, and he didn't mention Dakar. But so. you're not. But, 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 but you're not wrong, Jonathan. You're right. There, there yeah, was rumours right there. Ryan Gravenberch, player, player. We are going to be doing an Ajax 
uh, one of these. So watch out for that so you can pick that up on that. <coughs> Boom. There we go. Uh, cool. All right. Next, 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 next. Need to move on. Uh, Leeds are uh, now confirmed they will not be pursuing the signing of uh, forward Rodrigo de Paul as uh, they're not willing to spend the 30 million. And Victor also said they need to spend mm. their money more carefully. Um, PSG have opened yeah. talks with Real Madrid captain Sergio Ramos. Uh, Real Madrid are not willing to offer him more than a year on his current contract, seen as the keeper to their policy of no new, uh, no more than a year for any over 30s. Uh, Man City defender Eric Garcia has agreed personal terms with Barcelona. He's always going Barcelona, and that's been a known thing for about a year now. Um, uh, Balogun update. Um, so the latest, the latest one I'm hearing from Balogun, um, I did actually hear that um, Stuttgart was one of the clubs that was uh, very interested in Balogun that he's potentially signed the pre-contract with. Uh, we're, we're still reaching out to people to get any confirmation on that. Um, with regards to Balogun, I w- I'd just wait until the end of the season because I'm, I'm probably hazarding the guess that it would, a lot will make... Um, a lot will depend on how much game time he gets from now until the end of the season as to whether he signs his contract with Arsenal. Um, the contract's on the table for Arsenal um, and it's about game time. Um, he feels that he should be playing first team football with a team and he's, he's he has that right to, uh, which is why youth players generally leave this till the end of their contract runs out, not signing a new contract during that a lot of a lot of youth players will do that because they want to see if there's an actual path into the first team. Um, this is why you'll see clubs lose some very highly rated youngsters. Um, I see a lot of the same questions being asked in the comment section. Please scroll up. I've answered them some sometimes uh, in there as well. Uh, so please look for any any responses I've made on that. Mm. Um, Just a, what you said about Rodrigo uh, and Leeds, um, Juventus has there said that Pogba has been put into touch and uh, Rod- Rodrigo's the more likely target for them. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, rejected bids um, for Crystal Palace West Brom for Ozan Turfan. Uh, West Ham have agreed. Uh, agreed a 20 million f- uh, fee for forward Sebastian Heller to uh, I actually completed his move I think it was Thursday Marcus Rojo um, agreed a two year deal with Boca Juniors however there was a hold up there's a problem with the deal isn't there Steve is it Rojo um, wants the remainder of his contract paid off yeah what, 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 yeah the, yeah, the, 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 yeah. He, he wants the uh, remainder of it um, paid off and uh, they um, they're just messing about. I don't know the ins and outs of the wins and the whys at the moment, <clears throat> but uh, they've, they've 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 agreed that he can go. They can they can agree that uh, that he will be leaving. They, they've agreed that the you know the the personal terms and everything's done. Um, but so but that seems to be holding something up. And uh, yeah, so, yeah. So what I heard from the deal is Marcos Rojo. Um, he's got six months left on his contract, hasn't he? Um, yeah. And yeah. he's he's essentially saying that he wants the rest of his contract paid um, for him to go to Boca Juniors. Uh, that's what I mm. heard. Um, mm. And yeah, this is Joe. You know, like, the weirdest thing is, I was having a conversation about something completely different with Steve the other day, and I was like, yeah, yeah players, players will, players will not. There's players that will like, not go if you don't play the round the comment contract. Literally about two days later, I heard about this Marcus Rojo. So mm. the maddest you hear yeah, about the maddest shows, didn't it? transfers. Yeah, um, player feels he's due his money. He wants his money because um, I'm guessing he's probably they, 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 they wanted, they wanted to try and they wanted to try and sign him up for another year as well. You, yes, you know, they were trying they, to force. Yeah, they trying to that's what they want to, because they want they want more money for him. But but that's what Edward yeah. Wood does. He done the same thing yeah. to. Um, uh, Oh, what's his name? Jones. It's madness, and he's and and they done. They just uh, triggered the year extension on uh, Jesse Lingard's contract as well to do the same thing, so they can get money from. Well, the, yeah. the, there's obviously a pattern there, don't there, with Man United and you know that, some of the things that people back, do. 
B's chief exec while someone else does the recruitment and contract stuff because it, it's just not. It's not. That's that. That's holding Man United back. That kind of it stuff. Is. It is, man. It's that's greed. It's just greediness. I mean, these these yeah. top clubs. I think. I think for years now, for absolute years, they try and get that last penny that they can, that last grain of the mm. like the pan note. Uh, but even you can even go back to the, you know, to one of the greatest players. You know that's ever played in the, the greatest player that's ever played in the Premiership. Uh, you know Dennis Burkham. He had to beg, beg on his knees to stay at the club. You know, and he had to take wage cuts and mm. he had to go sign certain things in his contracts. Just I feel, I mean, what a dis- I mean, what a di- I mean, we're going back a bit now, but ah, just that's just something that's stuck in me for for years now. But uh, that's what club, that's what chairman, that's what they try and do. That's what they're trying to do. Um, Stoke have completed the sign, loan sign of former Manchester City youth player Rabi Matundo. Uh, he was previously linked to Man United uh, uh, the st- uh, last year, uh, just after Christmas. Uh, Jerome, what's Rabi Matundo saying? Yeah, that, they've done well to get him, Stoke. Um, so he signed from Man City in 2019, uh, signed for Schalke. Now, when he was at Man City, um, in 2018, they did like these sprint tests. And he, he was like the quickest player at the academy there in 2018. Then they like looked at his, his results and they were like, wait a minute, he's, quick, he's quicker than Sterling, he's quicker than Walker. And he ended up, he, was the, he wasn't just the quickest player at the academy, he was, he was the quickest player at the whole club. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was, um, he's actually a full Welsh international, this guy. Obviously, absolutely rapid, only 20. Uh, winger plays on the left or the right. Um, he he doesn't really he he doesn't get a lot of goals. I guess he's a winger, so he's not you know he's, that's not his main job. But he scored in thirty league games for Schalke. He's only scored two league goals. Um, but I think they had high expectations for him, and um, maybe mm. he hasn't lived up to the expectations at Schalke. But, yeah, um, possibly. From- Maybe yeah. yeah. From what I hear, um, it's uh, it's maybe a mentality thing, and uh, it's kind of decision making on the pitch. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But also, it's... the team, Schalke in general, they've struggled, haven't they? Like this season, they, obviously yeah. they brought and in last season. Cool. Cool. Yeah, not yeah. Off. Yeah. That's why they brought in um. Kalasinac. Arsenal, yeah. 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 They 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 won their first. And it's made a very difference. Yeah. I watched cool. their yeah. game, yeah. mate. It's not a surprise though. Look, 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 when he left, he was like when he was that their player of the season. So it's it's been a big lift. Hmm. I was talking to Marie, and she she said he was outstanding uh, yeah. the weekend. Yeah, it was. And just just right. shows you, didn't it? Good luck, good, good luck, luck to him. him. I like him. Good luck to him. Yeah, like, I, like I don't him. hold any ill feelings to any Arsenal players that leave, unless they leave on bad terms. Um, and I soon get over it anyway. Yeah. About to say, I just want to say, though, I'm not just saying, oh, yeah, I watched him because he's gone. I just wanted to see if there was any difference with what I saw from Arsenal and what I saw from Schalke. With Schalke, he looked more comfortable in his position. Yeah. And the wing, players, man. the players, yeah. Left, wing, left, pl- left. Mm. Yeah, the players looked more comfortable as well. They were actually attacking more. Hoffenheim yeah. struggled to deal with him for the first 45 minutes and they've not won a goal no sorry they've not won a game in 30 literally they've not won a game mm. in 30 and since he's signed they've won one and they won it 4-0 very yeah. comfortably yeah yeah that yeah. Yeah. trick weren't it from the uh, the young young American and kid, but the thing uh, is you've got to remember he's also taken a lot of experience from his time at Arsenal as well so um, and playing in the Premier League yeah so sometimes sometimes like we was talking about couple of weeks ago sometimes you'll bring that one player in and it will just lift lift everybody um you know it not necessarily means he has to be world class or you know international quality but someone could just come in and he, it, it just makes that difference to, to the side and uh yeah, yeah. you know it looks like exactly. Clash Nash has done that um, Crystal Palace defender Mahmoud Sarko uh is in advanced talks with Nice uh, Manchester City youngster Jaden Braff um, is in talks with uh, Bar because as we spoke about earlier. Uh, Mustafi has turned down three clubs and only wants to join Inter Milan <laughs> or Barcelona. So he did turn uh, down the, the, the deal with Genoa. Uh, that was the one that was uh, the latest one he was in talks with. He doesn't want to go Genoa. Um, uh, but he said he's going to stay at Arsenal if he uh, yeah. 
he doesn't see if he doesn't if Inter Milan or Barca don't take him, um, he's going to see I, out. The can I mention something? Do you make him right? Do you make him um, right? Do you go somewhere yes. you don't want to go? Yes, I make him right. Do you I, 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 say, oh, reaction, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that? The reactions that. I see what are nonsense. What do you do? Absolute nonsense. I don't look. want to go. The only reason, I won't go anywhere look. I don't want to go. Mustafi well, the thing... Oh, sorry, I'm just saying, the one thing I have been told, though, and I can clarify, not clarify this, but I can give you 100% certain on this, if he stays from January, he isn't included in the Europa League and the Premier League 20 man, 25-man squad. So he's an Ozil. He will not be included. Can they change it again? Yeah, they they can change it from January. They can change it. So if Ozil was still here and say Arteta's not here, you've got Allegri that comes in and he wants to play Ozil, he can include him in both Europa League and Premier League. I have been told by three people that Mustafi will not be included in the Premier League and in the Europa League. So he but knows the thing is, he's got, got to find somewhere. So, 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 so but the thing is, I'm sure I'm he saying. knows that. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't yeah. seen it, is he? Oh, he knows, he knows that. that. He, yeah. He does that. So he probably... What I'm saying so, is, is, look, Mustafi ain't picking Barcelona and Inter Milan out of his backside. <laughs> he's staying in Barcelona and Inter Milan because he has spoken to Barcelona and Inter Milan. He has held talks mm. with Barcelona. Yeah, mm. yeah, they, yeah. They weren't willing to offer him the right wages. But that doesn't mean that Barcelona weren't interested. <laughs> and Inter Milan <laughs> would have been the same. <laughs> like, he, he didn't just go. He didn't just say, yeah, do you know what? Yeah, do you know what? I ain't, I ain't going nowhere unless Ralph just come after me. That, that would be like nuts. <laughs> but I, I don't think he's wrong in turning down the likes of Fenerbahce, Girona, and this is not to say because I think he's better than them. <laughs> Girona looks well pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, as a player myself, I'd be like, I don't want to sign a three year deal and live in Turkey. I, this is not me saying I don't want to live in Turkey. I love Turkey. I've never been, but it sounds a beautiful country. I'm just saying, <laughs> him as a player, he may be thinking, I don't want to live in Turkey for three years. I don't want to go to Italy. They're, they're like, I don't want to play for Girona. I want to go in the. I want to play in Europe. I still feel I've got enough of me to play in Europe, to play at a level. I don't want to be batting around in mid-table uh, Girona or wherever they are. I don't, know where, <laughs> I don't know where they are. I apologise to any Girona fans out there. But you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's fully his prerogative to say where he wants to go if he has options. And in the summer, he will have a plethora of options. I guarantee that. <clears throat> He probably thinks he's got half a chance of, of playing at Barcelona because Barcelona can only buy got no money. A, cer a certain got no type players. of player. So maybe he's <laughs> clocked that. Maybe he's clocked it and thought, well, hold on, you know, maybe I've got a chance. <laughs> 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 I like Mustafi, but, I, uh, but <laughs> nah. <laughs> Yeah, it was when I heard it. Even, I, was, I, I, I like him. I like him, and but I can't. So I'm like Jerome. I think Mustafi would uh, <laughs> would do a good job at a club that like isn't asking you to play out at the back. Is just going to block and throw his body on the line, and probably isn't expecting tens mm. every game. Um, I think that would be a good club for him. But I don't think yeah. Barcelona would be that club. I think he would get. I think it, I think you could end up on the on the bench quite a lot at Barcelona. Uh, another, another saga, isn't it? Yeah, Just another it saga be. that's going to uh, um, happen. Liverpool have matched Real Madrid in putting a, forward a contract for uh, David Alaba. Um, I still think he's going to go Real Madrid. Uh, didn't he say that he mm. wants to play in Spain? Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. he's going to go Real Madrid. Uh, Charlie Austin completed yeah. his loan move to QPR. Uh, Juventus um, are said to be closing in on the sign of Nate's youngster Adebay Dabo. I think uh, Jerome did a thing about him previously in uh, the last, not this Guardian Top 60, but the previous one, I think it was, because um, I was thinking he was in there. Uh, Sergio Gerard held talks with PSG. Uh, Leon and Atletico Madrid are in talks to sign, um, to take Musa Dembele to the club. Um, and a Socrates update. Um so, Socrates, um, Fenerbahce, um, yeah, the latest Simon. we've heard is... is uh, <laughs> uh, Please. <laughs> Please. Um, yeah, that, that, that was the latest we've heard. Um, 
we've heard that there should be something coming out early next week. Um, mm. uh, I suppose, and the same as with Ozil as well. Um, and as soon as those deals done, potentially it's like useless. Right move, but I, I mean, in in this in this window, it remains to be seen. Um, do we do no, we do we wait? Do we do we put our players down? To, you know, like the Socrates and the Staffies. Yeah. Are, are we underrating them? No. No, I think I think that. <laughs> I think that the because if, players, we normally do, and they, everybody goes to some other club, and they always become the nuts. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I'm not saying these players are are rubbish. I'm not saying that. Yeah, because because no, because not being funny. Yeah, funny, yeah? <laughs> not being funny. Yeah, not being funny. Socrates came into Arsenal's team. Yeah, right, and really, I didn't. Right, and yeah. I didn't rate him. And I did mm. not rate him. I said he was too slow. He's too this. He's too that. Yeah, mm. and then, uh, and then. He had a season with Arsenal and was good. T- changed my mind on, changed my opinion on him, but it didn't change my opinion mm. on the type of defender he was. Yeah, mm. him and Mustafi are two similar types of defender in my eyes. And when you start getting into the realms of these two players that are like good, solid, uh, good in the air, front their body on the line kind of defenders, you're getting into the realms of I just feel like our d- defense was getting too clumsy, and I can't. I can't, mm. I can't have that because that ain't Arsenal. It's not. It ain't. Like yeah. even Tony Adams, kids, like, don't you th- throw your body on the line? He weren't clumsy. He was solid. So Campbell was solid. Um, Tour, uh, was was quick and solid. Like these are solid players, but they they could play. They could play. Still Seagull, solid, was actually Mate, good. Hey, Mustafa, uh, Murtasaka, could, <laughs> Murtasaka got rinsed. But I'll tell you what, he's, he's a, a much better defender. He's miles better than Mustafi, and he's, yeah. and he's a better defender than Socrates. And, 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 and Murtasaka used to get rinsed by our fans all the time for his pace. And he didn't even get done for pace that much. For someone Murtasaka so slow... Was- he was, so quality, he, pace, he, he, he was quality. He was quality. He was quality. Hardly any was quality. I don't, I don't remember one single time him getting done for pace. Hardly anyone. It was a couple early doors. Maybe when he got injured. Positioning drain all the time. Brilliant. 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 So but yeah. What is it? What is what? What is it with you, you? Just said three players there. We've just said Mustafi, Socrates, and who was it? Klesinets. When they first come into Arsenal, they was all they was brilliant, weren't they? Yeah, but fantastic. I don't. I, I don't think Kolasinac. What is it with Arsenal players, and then all I, of a sudden they drop? No, I what don't think Kolasinac is again. Kolasinac has been played out of position. Kolasinac is a, is a wing back. He's a left wing back, and he's been played the majority of time as a left back. Now, in his stints mm. when he was played left midfield or he played left mm. wing back, Marco Alonso was good. got ripped, didn't he? Kolasinac was actually half decent as well for for a, in his first season he was all right in his second season he weren't bad he's not a left back he was raving over him he's, he's, not, raving he's not a left him. back but he's not a left back he's a, he was getting assist he's not a left back though as soon as you take him from that push forward a bit and you've got to drop him in he's a different player completely different player and mm. Arsenal don't play enough with wing backs to to have him in the team because mm. when you need cover at left back he's, he's not he's not going to do the job every no. he, he, he'll have he'll have in five games playing at left back he'll have three good games or three okay games and two howlers and you can't afford that Arsenal can't afford to have that it needs to get to a level where it's got consistent consistency again it can't mm. be consistent consistent oh someone in the team's had a clangor again it need, we need to get out of that. Back to basics. Mm. Get these mistakes, silly mistakes, out of the way. Um, so yeah, yeah. I think it's just time to move on from the likes of Mustafi and and uh, and Socrates because mm-hmm. they're from a from a from an old old regime, past. Um, yeah. So yeah, just it just needs to move on. And yeah, that's the same. We can put a few years for for in a new camp. Yeah, I think the, I think the same goes for um, Ozil. Um, I, uh, as you've seen already with with the with the likes of um, uh, Ozil, 
news already coming out that um, Arsenal terminating the contract is looking like he's going to go. I've hardly seen anyone turn around and go, oh, okay, he's always in this and that. And it, it's been very much... On the cards, hasn't it? I, it I, it's been mer- very much what I thought would be maybe in two weeks' time where people are like, oh, no, good luck to him. It, it was this. He's a quality player. It just, it just got to the point where he needs to move on and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? So I think that is... I think people accept that um, and just move on from Ozil. And I, but I think he it's is. time. It's, it's yeah. just time. It's just time for me. It's just time. Yeah. I just don't want to keep on talking about Ozil in the squad. Should he be playing or not? It's just time to move on and get a replacement. He um, is one of the most technical players we have seen at Arsenal. No, I'm not saying mm-hmm. like hybrid players like that. I mean, in the Emirates, he is one of the most technical players we have seen at the Emirates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Iman says Fabregas. Iman, yeah, you just took the words out of your mouth. I was just going to say, like Fabregas, yeah. Yeah, Santi Cazola is a bit of a magician as well. Santi Cazola. We've had them. We had Santi Cazola, Sanchez, and Ozil in the same team, mate. (laughs) Silence. (laughs) (laughs) It was just reminiscing. (laughs) Reminiscing in your head. And they were booing at that point. They were booing. No, Kira, we were booing because we kept finishing they were fourth. They... And we wasn't moving anywhere. That's what uh, we were injured. Where are we now? Where, where are we now? Where are we no, but I still last... don't want to be where, back just where, finishing where, fourth. Where have we been And for going last... nine years without a trophy. Where, where have we been for the last three seasons? We weren't moving anywhere. We weren't moving anywhere with so Enger. So move backwards to go forwards? Yeah. Or do you just move forwards? No, we can't just move forwards because when Wenger's going, we're going to have heartache. We're going to, we've had all the heartache. We're still going to get heartache. But I don't. I I hated it when it was finish it top four and that's it. Champions League again. Oh, wait till a good team comes and get battered. Now we've got Arteta who has a clear vision on what he wants to do. I can't wait till that day comes and we see Arteta as our manager in the Champions League. I'm looking forward to that day. It could be 10 years, it could be 20 years on. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, if Arsenal, if Arsenal buy the right players... Yeah, you, you've, got to understand, you've got to understand the difference between the league now and the league then. The league now, you, you, you've got, at the start of every season, right? and you know people in the comments, you know, you've got to understand this as well. There were six, seven teams. Where if they won the league, right, you wouldn't bud an eyelid. You wouldn't, right? You would not bud an eyelid. So to keep saying we're going to leave, we the league in two, three years, no, it ain't going to happen. It's success now. Success now for for the big teams. You can finish second. You can finish third. You can finish fourth. You know, because someone out of Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Chelsea, Tottenham, Arsenal, Leicester. Now, I've just named seven. Any one of them could could win the league on on, on their day, mm-hmm. if they have mm-hmm. a good season. So to say that we're going to win the league in two years, no, ain't gonna, no, no, mm-hmm. won't happen. All right, um, Jerome. I think I, I didn't have any more from you, did I? No, I think that I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. That was it. All right. All right. Was there something Steve, on with Bill Morrison? Oh yeah, yeah Bill Morrison. Morrison. Well, Morrison, go on, Steve. You can you can break the news. Well, it's it's not it's already out there. I think. Well, yeah, yeah. It's been like go on, Steve. Yeah, Morrison has had his contract terminated <laughs> uh, by mutual consent by um, Den Haag. Uh, he's, he's he's club. He's he's only played five games. Um, Den Haag been asked why. Um, They've, they've refused to comment why, um, but they asked, you know, have, have you got anything to say um, about anything about, about it? Um, as I said, they, they refused to comment and on that part, but they said, all we'll do is that we'll wish him good health. Hmm. So I reckon he's done something again. It he sounds like to me he's done is something. That the I did read. Ravel Morrison. I did read he'd been let go, though, after only being there for wait, six months or six games. Something six. Yeah, and they've, six let him, they've let him go. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they have. Mutual term. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's what Steve just said. 
Yeah. 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 You know, yeah, it's it is, it is sad that there's, there's, as, soon as, as soon as a player like Ravel Morrison leaves the club, the first thing you're assuming is the fact that he's probably caused some shit. But mm. it, 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 you're, I guarantee in a couple of weeks, he'll probably hear something on that. Um, I'm hoping it's not. Um, but mm. hopefully, he finds a club and can finally settle down because I think people need to see what Ravel Morrison can do. Um, there's been a lot of hype about him. Um, so it's probably about time that he settles down and finds a club and shows what he's about. Um, yeah. I remember Sir Alex Ferguson saying that out of all the players he's managed in his managerial mm. career, that's the talent, that's the most talent player that he's ever, he's ever seen in his life. There was yeah. his own quotes because it's in his book as well. He talks about Ravel Morrison mm. in his book. Yeah. All right. Yeah, all right. All, right. Um, all, all, all things Arsenal, I, I don't, I don't. I don't take no notice of none of them names. I don't take no notice of none of um, anyone. That I don't know. I mean, I know AFC info, but other than that, the, all these other names you're mm-hmm. saying, I don't. I don't. I talk to AFC info, but uh, with regards to information, I don't. I don't. I don't say that anyone knows anything or doesn't know anything. So yeah, that's all I'm saying. Um, as, uh, yeah, just just before just before we go, just for Milix Milix looks like he's going to Juventus um, um, oh, on some oh, cut. Oh, is it? I tell you what, I tell you what, your know eyes size is good. Yeah, well, that Milik one. I think just that's, a, that's what I've heard from. You know who? Yeah, so there's a we've actually put a post out on that uh, about four Wait. four months ago about Milik to no. Juventus. Yeah, yeah honestly. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you know why? Yeah. I mean, because I, I put the post out, yeah, literally about two hours mm-hmm. later, one of the big names turned around and said, um, yeah. his main transfer target is not Millet, it's so-and-so. And I was like, are yeah. you watching the page and trying to <laughs> absolutely yeah. shut down mm-hmm. everything we're saying? You're, like, you're winding me up. You're seriously winding yeah. me up. And I think everyone knows who well, that is. But yeah. Um, there's a lot, just, just quickly on it, I mean, the chief football... Um, officer of Juventus, which is Fabio Parisi, uh, mm-hmm. he, he's been he's mm-hmm. talking um, next week to uh, Fabrizio Divec about um, about freeze transfer uh, in the summer. Um, as we know, um, me and me and you, Kieran, picked him in our team last week. Uh, that, that's in the summer. Uh, also, but the talks are going to be they're trying going to try and get a cut price deal for the January, um, okay. so they can take him in January. So if they can get a cut price deal. Like I said with Juventus, they can't afford. They're, they're buying loans and cheap players. If you remember about yeah, 20 yeah, minutes yeah. ago, which so makes this, sense. This sort of goes, well, yeah, yeah, this well, goes on from there. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and they're, and, they're, and they're willing to say they're willing to do a cut price deal, but that that's happening over next week. We, we'll see what happens. All right, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, if that one lands, they're all talking on it. If that one lands, that's top work from you two. Great work. Um, yeah, nice one. Um, Corey, Buendia, um, wait, just wait, mate. Um, Arsenal have held informal talks with with Norwich. Um, they've spoken about a fee. A personal terms have been agreed with the player. It's just about waiting. Um, as, soon as, Arsenal, as, as soon as Arsenal deals go through, we should hear more on the Bendia deal. Um, other than that, I don't know any other any other Arsenal solid targets that they've gone gone forward with. Um, I know targets for Arsenal. Ain't no point in me talking about targets now until we hear some serious movement um, on them. Otherwise, I'll just be throwing out names left, right and centre and there's no point in me doing that because y'all get confused with that. Um, <laughs> just waste everyone's <coughs> time, really. Yeah. I've, seen, I've just um, had a quick message on my phone. Um, I've just, just seen a buzz and I've just come up and it's uh, one of the AFC gunner and he's, uh, he's mentioned Rico Henry. Uh, Jerome, <laughs> I don't know if that's someone we've looked at. Have you heard of Rico Henry Brentford? Nah, nah that are him. Uh, defender, nah, I, I, West Ham. <laughs> Just Rico, Rico Henry. Rico, Rico right, cool. Henry. Uh, Jerome's gonna have a busy week next week. Jerome's gonna have to start <laughs> his new 
his own show because he's got a list of names that have just <laughs> popped up in the in the uh, in the comment section. In right. his filing cabinet. Make sure everyone goes <laughs> and likes and subscribes. Make sure you go and share. Um, little say hello to everyone in the comment section. Oliver, thank you very much for joining. Oliver is one of the new guys who's joined us, but joins us every week. And he's always on the page. All right, uh, thank Oliver. Thank you very much for joining us again. Uh, at Krem, we said hello earlier. Melvin Marks, how you doing, Melvin? How you doing? Melvin. Lex, it's a new name. Corey, how you doing, Corey? Back again. Zidane, I see you on Instagram. How you doing, Zidane? Uh, OMO, how you doing? NCAM Frank, not seen you before. How you doing? Thank you very much. Is there any Arsenal fans in the building? There's too many. That's, that's been one of them. Uh, RH, thank you very much. Uh, Glenn Cook, see you. I see you. I see you. Um, Gunners Raven, I see you every week. Me, how are you doing? Me, how nice to see you again. Um, Archie, how you doing, Archie? It's a Pokemon, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> my great 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 um, grandson's Pokemon keeps saying I've got Mia. Oh, see, see, so walks. Sure, yeah. um, see, says Arsenal should go for Donny van der Beek. Uh, Jonathan Cox, hey, hey, Jonathan. Uh, Peter G, that's our boy, Peter G. How you doing, Peter? Thank well, you for joining us tonight. Hey, how you doing? Thank you very much for joining us again. Change his profile. <laughs> Uh, it's Mayer. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, see, look, Jerome, you've got a list of players here. Look, there you go. Look at oh, that lock. <laughs> yeah. I ain't messing about. Seriously. This lump stuff. Screenshot um, it. Uh, <laughs> da, 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 da. What have we got? We've got, we've got, we've got, we've got, we've got. Hey, oh, lack of boy. Here you go. Stop asking about announced. Lackaboy. Oh, There's you've no just else. boxed in again, haven't you, Lackaboy? He's done it again. Yeah. Ten minutes. Always. That's every boy. Week. Come on. Listen, please. Come tell on, you man. Every week. There's no announce. There's no one. You talk about announce. <laughs> announce. <laughs> talk about announce. Like I said, that a deal's been completed. <laughs> no, stop. Stop. I can, I, 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 can, I can actually announce something that's true. I'm going for no. a cup of tea after this. 100%. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I've been sitting down too long. Yeah. Hey, so Dan, come on. You sh uh, Rewind back, yeah? We just did a little oh, player profile on, on, on Solomon. Um, uh, we've, 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 down, we've, we've, we've reached out. We've reached out um, to our people to ask if anything can it. So far, there's nothing that's been said. So, um, yeah, it's probably just just probably just probably rumours. But we gave you a little pro player profile to show you what he's about um, from our point of run. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, thank you very much for joining us, Jerome. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us, Simon. Cheers, everyone. Pleasure. And thank you very much for joining us, Steve. Cheers, everybody. Of course, I have to thank um, our f uh, oh, uh, Nathan. Thank you, Kieran, for hosting us again right, and you. being a great host. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Um, obviously, thank <laughs> you to, uh, to Nathan Ellington. Uh, one of the boys now, one of the boys, Nathan. Um, and obviously, thank you to our guests that came on today. That's Roshan Thomas of The Athletic. Yes, that is The Athletic. West Ham correspondent. So if anyone wants to question me on West Ham news, don't mess me. We've got Roshan Thomas on our side. <laughs> I thought you were going to do all that then. No, no. I, I was going to rip this off. I've got then, it. Um, we could lose <laughs> half of our subscription. So... Uh, <laughs> through jealousy um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah and honestly yeah. thank you very much um, for our guest uh, Richie Bennett, uh, Bennett Richard Bennett uh, Richie Bennett. Richie Bennett and uh, Jamie Stott and obviously um, the uh, Marine Town uh, player um, uh, Josh Chamonix Josh thanks Josh, Josh. Chamonix uh, do you know what? It's because I've said so many names in this two and a half hours. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't. My 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 sub core, like meant to be holding memories, just gets obliterated by the end of this, mate. <laughs> I feel drained. I've been speaking for two and a half hours. Yes. Thank you very much for joining us, boys. Um, good luck to Richie and Jamie tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to say good luck to Roshan because he always feel, he already feels like he's won. Um, so I'm sure if yeah, uh, West Ham yeah. don't win, uh, we'll have a little uh, little pod with uh, Richie, yeah. Jamie, and Roshan. Uh, that'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
And uh, yeah, yeah Josh, Josh Hamini, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, you should be proud of yourself and your team. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, yeah, done peace proud, out. Man. Well done. Peace out, um, everyone. Stay safe. Um, peace out, stay safe. <laughs> and wash your hands. My brain is a mush right now. <laughs>